and we are live what's going on everybody happy wednesday i believe this is our not second to last yeah second to last there's only like one two more streams i think for 2022 which is absolutely insane i feel like this year flew by so quickly yeah, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, let's see, who's here? Staff, I saw Turtle is here for 20 minutes. I appreciate you stopping by while you can. Uh, Delmar, zombie for one minute. I'll take the 60 seconds. Dan, Lisa, uh, Jose, I think I said Muse. What's up? Uh, Dutch is here. I hope everyone's doing great. Uh, Scott's here. Uh, it's looking good. A little grayscale. Yeah, 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 not a whole lot of color going on. Um, so today we're gonna be continuing on the Mercury 1.1 build. Um, last week we got the motor mounts done. Uh, we got the tensioners mounted. The Y rails are on and they're still loose. They're only mounted at one point. So that way they don't slide front to back, but they can still move left to right. Um, what else? Um, oh, since last week, the only thing I've done is that Fabrico sent out the shims that were provided in the initial kit were a little short. They're supposed to be one millimeter spec, um, for the bearings and they were point seven ish give or take and so i did swap out all of these shims are now uh to spec which are like i think i measured a few and they were like 0.97 to one mil so they're right there uh which i will say um i it was much easier to install the shims when there was a little bit of play versus when they are to spec there's which is what you want you don't want the bearings to really be able to move up and down um but it definitely was a bit tougher especially on these tensioners in the front, I was um, installing them the other night and was just laughing, thinking about how uh, it would have been really entertaining to watch me struggle, I'm sure, on stream. Uh, so, uh, did you receive my delivery? I, I did, Dan, thank you very, very much. Uh, I did, I think it was the, um, it was a book, right? The potty book and the, uh, the uh, gosh, like the teething teething thing or something like that. Thank, <laughs> thank you, we did. Um, so, Today, a couple things. One, uh, before I forgot to say it uh, at the beginning last time, but massive thank you to Fabrico uh, because they did sponsor this build and send out the parts so that we can do this. Um, I had a few people asking last week about availability. Currently, it looks like the Ender 5 Plus, no, the no rail versions are in stock, but Fabrico did tell me in the last 24 hours that the versions with the rails will be available uh, really, really soon. So if you are interested, there's a link down below and uh, hopefully there will be a resupply uh, or a restock on the website soon here. So um, additionally, uh, I think that the original plan was, uh, so about that, rook bearings are so, <laughs> um, so the original plan was to do the base conversion, get that working, then instantly do the Hydra. Um, we might be having a break between base conversion, playing around with that and doing the Hydra uh, for two reasons. One. Uh, Fabrica also let me know that the lead screws are a little bit long that I have and I can cut them, but he's also going to be sending out the correct ones. But um, we're also going to be building a 2.4. So there's a chance that once we get this built, um, we will have this stream likely next stream. And there might be a pause for a few weeks while I sort of get everything together for the Hydra and we work on the 2.4. Not entirely sure, but I did want to mention that. Um, also, I think I, meant, I mentioned it last week, but the uh, 100, we hit 100,000 subscribers. Um, uh, yeah, I, I uh, forgot. We definitely hadn't hit that by last week. So that is awesome. The the main Monbot channel hit 100,000 subscribers on... Um, it was sat, uh, Sunday morning. I was up refreshing it. It was probably around 1230 in the morning, uh, which is awesome. And so the 100K stream has been scheduled for January 4th. We will have the Wednesday stream on that channel instead of this channel for for that. Uh, it's going to be insane. There, There's going to be a lot of giveaways. Originally, it was like 30-something. I was like, this is a lot. We're up to like 50 giveaways and three printers. So um, it's going to be nuts. It, I'm really looking forward. Aaron's going to be there helping out. There's no way I can do it alone. But yeah, there's just a lot of vendors that have reached out after my initial announcement saying, hey, we want to partake in this. So yeah, it's going to be crazy. I hope you're able to be there. Again, it's already it's already on that channel if you do want to hit notify me. So, I think that's I think that's all the I think it's all the news I've got for right now. We're we're ready to get back into the groove of things here. Um next up, so major shout out to Turtle um as well who's in chat and is one of the uh main devs of the project. Um he's been in touch with me over the last 7 days giving me some awesome stuff. So, 
Because the instructions aren't complete, um, he was able to provide me with some exploded views of the, I believe they're the XY joints is what they're officially called, uh, which is really awesome and what we're going to be referencing. Um, so that's super cool. And what else, what else, what else? Oh, and, and some tool head, like the tool head stuff. So that way I can see sort of how this all goes together. So massive thank you, Turtle, for the info. It's going to be really, really helpful today, I'm sure. Uh, oh, hell no, baby Monbot update. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, baby Bot is doing well, is cooking. Um, we have our next uh, ultra, or we don't have another ultrasound soon. We have another appointment in like seven days. Uh, you can officially see 2000 subs next. <laughs> Thank you very much, Panzer, for the uh, renewed membership. Um, yeah, you can officially see baby kicking now, which is crazy. Like, stomach is shifting. So it, it's been exciting. I did get the crib built. I told you guys that last week's stream, I was attempting to build a crib and I failed. I stripped a nylon lock nut. So I did, the crib is officially built. I did do that. Uh, and I think that's the updates. I know someone had asked about the Voron stream and I know that there was some confusion about it because it was talked about on Twitter and I saw people asking what stream I don't see it. So Voron had a Christmas stream uh, where they just basically gave away a bunch of stuff as sort of a thank you to the community, but it was exclusive to the Voron owners club. So like if you, if you had, if you have a Voron and it's ser serialized, then there was a chat, like a private thing. There, there was like a, thousand entries almost or something like that but uh that is what i was talking about don't uh psst, don't talk about that stream oh okay never mind there's no stream i i don't know how secret it is I, but yeah that's that's what i was referencing and i saw that delmar won something so that's what i was asking about i saw dj there uh too i saw dj natty there so if he's kicking play him some music yeah he, he gets really active at night and so i'm like he's it's gonna be my little night child just like me up working on printers in the middle of the night so uh, okay, let's let's get going because I want to uh, get as much done as we can today. As always, we will be doing our giveaway for the Spool of Polymaker filament. Uh, we will open that up in an hour and 23 minutes. And yeah, I think that's it. So um, I've got Scott's video pulled up here. This is right around where we left off. Let's see, they are uh, very particular about that in the admin team. Ah, gotcha, okay. He says, I didn't get my time. late night club. <clears throat> sending DMs in the night. Sending, yeah. <laughs> sending DMs in the middle of the night too. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> my favorite time to respond to messages or emails is at like midnight to one o'clock in the morning. It's my, <laughs> my quiet time. So, um, all right, we've got this pulled up. So this is, I know, before the changes were made, but I anticipate, um, I anticipate that I can at least use this reference as a direction. So I'm thinking, let's see here. Uh, we'll also go to reference. Let's also reference this. Uh, 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 this is the latest, right? Yeah, it's gotta be. Uh, um, so the main things I wanna see is the bottom. So it looks like if I go to, uh, um, let's see, this is gonna be X, Y, Temporary import. Where is it? Uh, right tension assembly, stepper mount, tension plate. What is it called? Why don't I see it? Uh, is it one of these? Nope, these are the belts. Is the part with the longer post, the, pr the printed part that has the longer post, is that bottom or top? That's what I'm trying to check. Tension plate, part one, stepper motor mount, tension plate. Nope. I must just be missing it. Unless it's part of the rail. Ah, it's part of the rail. Okay, that's why. Uh, 1.1.4 equals top. The front post was moved from the bottom half to the top. Okay, gotcha. So that's what I've got then. So these guys, um, they switch things up. So the post is on the top. So then if the that's where the extrusion is gonna sit, then it will be like that. And we'll start with the bottoms then. So bottom should be, I'm assuming, for, uh, let's see, so curved curved part, which is the front part where the post is at, is facing the front with the flat towards the back. So it looks like, let's not drop the stuff yet. Did I print out? <laughs> okay, cool. So it looks like this is how it's gonna go. 
It's been a crazy morning, so I'm a little bit <laughs> a little more scattered than I was last week. We have been in the process of transferring our phones and um, it's been a little complicated. So I was on the phone with Verizon for a while this morning, trying to figure all that out. Uh, let's see. So I apologize in advance. Also, can you guys hear the loud printer running behind me? I have the P1P on the ground cranking out parts. I, I'm assuming it's not that bad considering I was drilling last week and you guys said you could barely hear it, but just wanted to confirm. Okay, so that's what that is. And then does uh, Turtle, does this have the size bolts? It doesn't look like it does. Um, five millimeter diameter, those are the inserts. And then this, doesn't look like it shows. No. So let's reference, let's reference this. And let's get rid of, uh, nope, these are just the flanges. Okay, there's the bottom. So what I'm curious about is M3, so must be these. Nope, it's not M3, or those are M5s. Uh, M3 by five by thirties, M3 by five by eights. What size bolts is it um, that bolts it to the rail? Uh, M3 by five by 30, those are all M3 by five by eights, M3 by five by eights, twelves. That's got to be it. No, is it not? Oh, it is an M3 by 8? Okay. Greetings from the middle. Holy cow. Pi, Pi is on a cruise. <laughs> Tuning in. That's awesome. Hey, Pi. I hope you're having a great cruise, man. <clears throat> okay, so M3 by 8s. M3 by 8s, where are we? M3 by 30s, M3 by 20s, M3 by 8s, okay. Hey, what's up, Kevin? Uh, M3, M5 by 12 connects to the 2020 Gancho, gotcha, okay. Thank you, thank you very much, Kevin. Yeah, I can't believe, um, I, I, we weren't supposed to reach it this year, and then the last, the last few videos have just performed really well, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I, I can't believe that we hit 100k. It's nuts. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is get this bolted in place, and there are four screws that do this. I'll just kind of lightly seat them all. Uh, that's nice. How's the weather? Hey, what's up, Jonah? What's up, Nuno? Oh man, I, I don't remember if I said this last week or not. I don't think I did. No, it hadn't happened. It was like after the stream. I did something stupid last week. Um, I went to the hardware store to get some wood for a project and I came back home and <laughs> got distracted as I do and apparently left the trunk wide open. Uh, and we don't like, we don't use our garage here because the garage is full of, um, like just printers and machinery and crap that I use. And so the car sits out front and at 10 o'clock at night, I get a text from our neighbor across the street, also named Dan, ironically. <laughs> and he just said like, hey neighbor, uh, you know, I don't know if you're aware, but your trunk's open, you want me to close it? So I ran out at like 10 o'clock and closed it. And the next morning we woke up with three inches of snow. <laughs> so I, uh, I saw him yesterday and was like, Dan, you're an angel. <laughs> so uh, I don't typically leave my trunk open, but I certainly, um, it's a little different out here than in Southern California where, you know, we hardly have any variants of weather. So I was just thankful. Like the idea of me walking out to just the trunk open full of snow, um, part it partially makes me want to laugh, but also like cry a little bit. <clears throat> did you install the heat sets? Yes, yes, I did. Uh, I did that in the first, uh, the beginning of the first stream. I did my best. I think I installed all of them. I don't know if I need to install any more in the, um, 
tool head, but I think I got what I need in the tool head as well. Scott, Scott was telling me where to put them. Okay. I want to over tighten it, but okay, cool. That one's done. Let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to spin this around so we can see it. How's everybody's week been? Everyone, uh, you guys do your Christmas shopping and stuff already? I've pretty much been asking my parents for weeks to get me their Christmas wishes. Um, and I just got them like last night. I'm like, thanks. Amazon is not delivering in two days. Well, I mean, not at least not as often as they used to be. A lot of the things that I've ordered recently have delays and stuff. So we'll see if it shows up. Ready for time off, yeah. So anybody got big plans for Christmas? You guys kinda, uh, this isn't right, I goofed. This is the right one. Aaron's, Aaron's parents are coming out and it'll be the first time, the first time we've seen them since we moved uh, back in June. So I know, well, I'm excited, but Aaron's certainly super excited and I, I Keep telling Aaron, I'm like, your parents are gonna freak out when they see you and they see <laughs> they see your belly. <laughs> she sends photos and like, you know, talks to them all the time and FaceTime, but like it's just different when <laughs> you see them in person. <clears throat> Amazon sucks, I've been waiting two weeks for a new soldering iron. Yeah, I ordered a tripod on <clears throat> I think Black Friday, excuse me. And, and um it had you know two-day delivery prime and it just says running late. <laughs> So I'm like, all right, well, I guess it'll show up when it does. Yeah, I definitely um, am not confident in gifts coming on time uh, as each day passes. Hey, what's up, Dane? Uh, fun to watch my younger brothers realize that socks and gloves are good gifts now that they are approaching their 30s. Oh man, I love, um, I love getting new socks. Sock, it's weird. Like socks are one of those things that I don't really buy new socks. Um, Aaron, Aaron always is like uh, giving me crap for my socks that I'll, like put a sock on and my toe sticks out. I'm like, that's ah, okay, I guess. <laughs> so she's made it her mission to like throw out socks that have holes in them. And uh, so anytime I get a sock set for Christmas from anybody, I'm like, sweet. Who doesn't need more socks, you know? Even if you have a bunch of good ones, like it, it means you can procrastinate on laundry for like another day here. Um, I killed my second two times. Oh, wow. Uh, the tool had one failed due to heat deforming and the new and improved had crashed. Oh no. Hopefully nothing that it's not uh, too difficult to, to fix. Uh, been super hyped for all the Rook mods and playing around with my own ordered parts for a second. Oh my God, I need to look, I need to look more into Rook. I've been saying it for weeks now. Originally I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, but I feel like there's more to it that I just need to look more into. Socks, underwear, and undershirts, best gifts ever because I don't have to buy new ones. Exactly. Yep, Aaron's been throwing out my socks for years. Okay, so we got the bottom parts on. Let's see if Scott puts in the I'm assuming extrusion. Yeah, okay. So we're popping in the extrusion next. Still wish I had a further out camera, but hopefully if I back this up a little bit. Let's see, maybe front view, maybe that, that'll do. I think that's okay. I'll make a Twitter post for you. Uh, let's see, I have some of the new metallic polymaker. Ooh, nice. Socks, yeah, socks always disappear. We, um, I had a cat, uh, where is that extrusion? Is it in here? I had a cat named Sabrina that, uh, she passed away years ago now, but she was my, she was my kitty cat and, um, she was a sock thief. I don't know, like late night, she would just hear meowing, but like kind of muffled because um, she was meowing with a sock in her mouth and she would steal socks from everybody and bring them to my room. <laughs> and it was awesome because I always had socks. Like all of a sudden my, my dad's like, hey, where's all my socks? And <laughs> it's because the cat was uh, cat was stealing them all. 
Okay, so this just slots in. Um, there's, I don't know how well I'll be able to show this. Let's just, little lift action. Um, it just slots in, it drops in perfectly there. So I've just got that loosely sitting in on both sides. Yeah, 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 I know, I know. I'm looking, I'm debating on uh, picking up a new camera for the channel. Um, it's been a couple years since I got this one and I've got my eyes on one, but it's either I have to go with the bundle or wait three months. And so I'm not sure yet, but if I do, the A6400 will likely get, um, I saw that they sell, cause I don't really want to drill into the ceiling. They sell like a tension pole thing that can go from wall to wall. And I'm hoping I can mount it up top. So that's likely what's going to happen. There should be a tiny gap on each side. Okay. There is a tiny gap on each side. I don't know that it matters right now until I tighten it. And I know at this point, I think we need to use those tools. Yeah, there they are. Okay. So this is going to make sure that our extrusion is parallel, which I have. Oh, you guys can't see this. Um, there's just a little tool that you basically mount to the left and right side, and then it bolts to the front frame and make sure that these two are perfectly parallel to each other. So I did print these out. Um, let's see. I think I printed them in red. Yep. All right. So I've got these guys and then we're going to use, it looks like M5 bolts. So let's see. I think I've got M5 T nuts. Hopefully I do. Yes. Got a bunch of M5 T nuts and then, uh, um, Crap, all of these M5 bolts are huge. I guess I can steal M5 bolts from, um... oh, these will work. Yeah, I think maybe. Okay, so I'm going to, let's see, so they go on the top. All right, so these are the parts and, oh, do we do? Do you bolt back and bottom? I thought it was only... I thought it was only back and top. All right, we'll do it. So I'm going to basically just take this, grab some bolts, hope that they're long enough. Yeah, it should work. Uh, I did only back and top. Okay. I'm gonna do the same then. I don't see, I don't I think it's overkill to have two points of contact on the uh, X extrusion. One second, one, two. All right, so going like this. Hopefully these bolts are gonna be long enough. And <laughs> I dropped it. <laughs> All right, let me move camera so I'm not holding it up to the camera. Okay, so I got one T nut in, and then the other one should be going top down like this. All right, rinse and repeat. Hey, zombie, for the uh, for the Rook build, what are you using to build? I know that um, they've been working on videos, but is it just the CAD or is it just sort of like, what's the build process like for it? Oh, come on. Come on. I don't know if I went with really cheap. 
pull through. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, last one. Uh, it's like little Lego. So so few parts, you just kind of install them. Okay. I think the GitHub has a CAD for it. The hardest thing is getting the tolerances right so the rods stay in place. Uh, what material? What material is it recommended to be printed out of? Is it ABS or are most people doing PTG or? Catch you later. Um, it's been almost a full hour since our last meal. Just trying to cruise through the... <laughs> hey, thanks for stopping by. Bye. <laughs> I'm glad to know that the cruise is going well and that you're, uh, you're eating good. PLA. Oh, wow. I mean, it's kind of cool for accessibility, right? What about, what about uh, cost? Like, if you're trying to be as cost-effective as possible, what's cost like for the full build? Okay, so it looks like basically just... <sighs> All right, so we are going to place this portion on the back side of this extrusion and tighten it. Uh, hopefully. Are they at an angle or are they, f they don't look like they're at an angle. I don't think they're at an angle. Okay, let me. Ah, shit. Okay, the bolts are like perfect length to work. Hey, what's up, nice? Happy Wednesday. I'm trying to think of the easiest way I can show this. Okay, so we have it bolted to the back of the extrusion, and then the front part here is going to bolt into the, <laughs> into here. So that, and then we'll do one on this side, so that way we know spacing on this side and this side are near identical, if not identical, hopefully identical. Is the camera is the camera moving on its own? Classic. All right, we'll do the same thing on this side. Let's see, right about there looks fine. Okay. Our right, extrusion is in place you know what one thing i think i might have goofed on because there's a little bit of uh gap between the ends is that i should probably loosen these back bolts and just slide it a hair so that way the gap is even let's see uh, yeah it looks about right You know what? Let's see. Oh, come on, Tina. The Tina, like this bolt, ideally would be a little bit longer. There we go. Okay. And we're good. Okay, so we've got the X beam in the printed parts, the XY joints, and we have it locked in on the left and the right uh, with these little brackets so that way it is parallel to the front. Hey, what's up, G-Funny? Happy Wednesday, man. Uh, I miss what you're doing. Purpose-built temporary brace for installing belts. Yeah, so it is, is it for belt tensioning? I believe it's to help with belt tensioning. But there's also another part for belt tensioning. I don't remember. These brackets um, are for, they're not for the belt tensioning, right? They're basically just so as you're tightening things up to make sure that it's it's parallel. But I would think, I don't know, it's a great question. 
I don't remember. <laughs> Scott explained it in his video when I was watching. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing here before, which is just installing the rail. <clears throat> and the rail uses, let's see. You also put them in the front. You're right, I did put them in the back. Um, maybe I should swap them around. You might want to insert the T-nut and then M5 by 12 plus plain washer in the bottom first. Yeah, I goofed. I did. I for some reason put it out of the way. You think it needs the bottom one, uh, zero, to secure it? The bolts that keep the extrusions attached to the XY joint. You might want to insert the T nut. Okay, let me um, let me do two things here. One, I did goof on this, so let me... Let's do this the right way. Let's install this in the front. Although front to back should be parallel, just so that way we're following... Following along. And then let me check to see what Dutch is saying about the XY joints. Hey, what's up, Italian? All right, and we drop the bolts. I knew it was gonna be scattered today, but <laughs> all right. So let's let's check. Oops. Why am I not seeing? Okay, so we have those in place. You're saying the part that attaches to the extrusion. Oh, come on computer. Uh, which part, which part are you referencing Dutch? I don't see. Is it? Let's see. Um, <clears throat> uh, the bolt that keeps the extrusion attached to the XY joint. It's not on this. No. <laughs> what bolt is it? Oh, that bolt. Right? No. That's the bolt I think you are referencing, which is... Yes. Yes. <laughs> We're learning. Okay. Gotcha. So there is a small bolt. It looks like bolt washer and T-nut that goes right there. That would be near impossible to get on after, or at least really difficult. Okay, thank you. So that is, it looks like, is that also just an M5, or is it an M5 by eight?
There you are. Okay, so we have got... Oops. It's M5 by 12. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dutch. <laughs> uh... And this is just an M5 washer. Oops. No. Plain washer. Okay, so M5 by 12. Are the washers separate to the shims? Or are they the same? I would imagine they're not the same. M3 washers, M3 nuts, M5 T nuts. I don't see. I've got the old shims, I've got the new shims. Uh, this is Shaper 3D, uh, which I really like. It's, it's, um, do I have just M5 washers somewhere that I can grab? I guess the shims, the shims should be fine for this. Uh, did you get a bag that says M dot, M1.1 dot upgrades? No, um, Fabrico did send out a bag with parts that has additional, looks like lots of M3 bolts, uh, M3 T nuts, but that's the extent of it. Uh, M3 washer, yeah, I don't see it. I would imagine that if I use the M5 shims that were slightly short, that's probably fine in this case since it's just to clamp down and isn't gonna have the belt path rolling on it. I think that's what we're gonna do. We'll just use the M5, uh, M5 shims. It should be okay. Uh, what's the plan? Z-axis, we are definitely doing, um, Z-axis, we are definitely doing the Hydra. Uh, I just don't know at what point there might be a little bit of a gap uh, where we do a different build after the base build and then return to the Hydra. Okay. Yeah, I, I really like it. Um, I really like the cam uh, or CAD software. It's it's evolved a lot over the years. I, I've kind of started playing around with it. It was originally an iPad app, like almost exclusively an iPad app and it works fantastic on iPad um with the pencil like it's the most it, it's a really nice experience but it's incredibly limited because i don't think i can show this very well on camera um it's really limited because of that fact as well but the they've since released a version for mac and a version for windows and then my biggest gripe was that it didn't have the ability to sync so you had to like i was pretty much um for mac air dropping the file when i was transferring to my computer something like that but they now have cloud sync, uh, so it syncs it amongst all of your devices, which is really nice. So you can, uh, but it's not it's not parametric modeling. So that's why a lot of people, that's most people's gripe with it. Uh, but for me, for a lot of the smaller things I'm quickly modeling up, the convenience alone is just, is awesome. Um, M5 T nuts, where are we? There we go. Thank you, uh, thank you for shouting that out, Dutch. Yeah, they. I think I got it on sale because it's a. It's like software as a service, so you pay either monthly or yearly for it. And I think they had it on sale um, a year ago for like a hundred ish dollars. Oh, these. Yeah, actually, let's just drop these in. And that's when I got it. Um, and they just since raised price by quite a lot, so. I'm probably going to keep my license for as long as I can because I don't want to pay the new price. <laughs> uh, looks about right.
Okay, so that's loose. Oh, well. Let's get the other one in. Okay, sliding this in, although we don't technically have to slide it in, but it's going towards the edge anyway. Uh, let's see, roughly a little further. Okay, so those are in place. Now let's check the gap again on left to right. That looks about right. And we are gonna clamp these down. So that way our extrusion does not slide left to right. Autofocus is tripping out. Uh, I'm so annoyed. I actually, I finally watched, um, because I've, I finally watched a video on how to set the manual focus correctly on this camera. Cause this is the secondary streaming camera. Um, and it works okay for certain things, but close-ups and lighting, it freaks out on. And I meant to change it before today's stream, but again, just a bunch of stuff that came up and I didn't get a chance, but hopefully before next stream, I will have that set up. Okay, so let's get these brackets back in to get us back to where we were. Oh, I saw, yeah, I saw Artillery announced a Core XY. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited to see what they come up with. I, I liked, I know a lot of, well, not a lot, but I know some people didn't like these um, Sidewinder because of the uh, ribbon cable setup that they went with. Um, for me, it was never an issue. I, I ran the crap out of that printer and it was great. Uh, I think that my biggest issue I, yeah, I didn't really have much issue actually. I, the biggest issue was that it did eventually one of the pins on the ribbon cable like kind of wore down. Um, I, but I mean, it was like after a year and they ship it with a spare. So I swapped out another one. But yeah, I, there was a lot of great stuff in that printer. There was, it was direct drive, which was certainly anything but a standard at the time. It's still not really for budget printers. Um, it had a volcano heater block. It had the ultra base style bed. Uh, there was just a lot of positives with that printer. And um, then they released the Hornet, which was kind of a funky, um, oh, you guys can't see what the heck I'm doing. Uh, then they released the Hornet, which was kind of a funky printer. Um, a lot more, a lot more plastic than their, than their um, Sidewinder. And then they didn't do anything for a long time, right? Like they, oh, the Genius, the Genius, which was basically the Ender 3 version of the, of the Sidewinder. Uh, hey, what's up, Ted? You won something. Ah, uh, crap, I'm not supposed to talk about the stream. <laughs> I saw your name too, I think. <clears throat> uh, what makes Core XY better than a Cartesian? Smoother curves. Well, with the Core XY, everything is much stiffer. The motors are also both working together, so there's not like to move in each direction, the motors are working together. So it's not like one's kicking on and then stopping. It's like a constant fluid motion of them two together. Um, the bed is either stationary always or is just riding up and down, which is a huge plus. Um, and then, yeah, the way the, the way the structure of the frame as well as the motion of it allows just for quicker speeds, really. I mean, that's really one of the primary reasons while also maintaining high levels of precision uh, and then with clipper and input shaper that that really helps
For me, the biggest uh, issue was inconsistent printing temperature on the glass bed. Gotcha. Okay, that one's in, one last one. <laughs> uh, and the X2 updates to both, still going strong line. Yeah, I I um I didn't have any issues with my X2. I ended up upgrading it to the Omnia drop at one point. And then a friend of mine needed parts to, I don't know, fix his X2. So. I ended up just giving him mine. Um, that was a while ago. But yeah, I didn't have any issues with it. I just was running out of space and my buddy needed it. So I was like, just take it. Hey, what's up, Steve? Happy Wednesday. <clears throat> uh, I have three shows I even know about the Fight Club. <laughs> okay. So we have returned from our departure from Grace <laughs> with that uh, backwards install. So, all right, we've got these in place. Oh, that's right, we're doing, we're installing the rail. Uh, okay, and I think we do every other, I would imagine it's the exact same setup. So let's grab M5 T-nuts, let's grab our rail, let's place it on top. You know, like this, just do front camera for right now. I think we need seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, that I can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, actually let's go side. Steve, thanks man. Uh, thank, thank you very much for the five memberships. Uh, hey, DJ Natty got one. Uh, Zero G, you got one. Uh, Low Sync, Nick Nick, and Beardface. Thank you, Steve. I really appreciate the support, man. Man, I just need, if the, if the tripod was just like, yay tall, you can see what I'm doing, right? Like that's the perfect angle I need, not down here. I'll have to figure something out um, moving forward. First, uh, first live stream since 100K. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Thanks, Steve. I uh, thanks, man. Ha happy Wednesday. Alrighty. Um, wait, am I? I'm wrong. We're not. We're not bolting this down with M5 screws, are we? We need M3 T nuts. I goofed. I didn't install them yet, but print a tripod extender. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Polymaker spools for cat. I've used, oh man, that's hilarious. That would work. I've got uh, plenty of filament. Yeah, let's see if I can give you guys a boost. We'll try it for fun. Cause you guys can't see anything. I'm not going two spools though. Single spool is the, single spools. That's about my risk tolerance. Let's see, one more. Might give us just exactly what we need. There we go, that's a little better. All right, let's see if I can get the focus in. Yeah, that's a little better. Uh, didn't you make that camera arm thing? I did, it's in the garage. Um, I haven't used it much here. The issue is it takes up so much desk space. I love it, I love it, it's, it's amazing. But um, it's, uh, for sure, congrats on 100K. Thanks, man. I am looking forward to the stream. I was just talking about it. There's like, we have like 50 prizes now um, that we had. Like, I had like a couple of people I'd reached out to. And then once I started mentioning it, I had a few other manufacturers reach out. So it's going to be nuts. Um, <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be nuts. I'm really excited. I never get lucky enough to get one of those uh, gift memberships. <laughs> okay. So I'm brain farting on 
Let's see here. Oh God. I think that the GPU on this is slowly starting to show its age. Okay, so we are looking for, there's right rail, left rail. Is there middle rail? Rolling T-nut, right tension, stepper part, left tension, assembly one. That's it, okay. What are the, um, Hey, Hobby, thanks for becoming a member. I want to say that all of these are M3 by 8s. Yeah, they are. Okay, so M3 by 8s, M3 T nuts. That's what we're going with. All right, now where are the M3 T nuts? I guess Rico did send over quite a few, so I have um, a bunch in this baggie. And then M3 by 8s. Maybe that's also what was sent over? Well, let's see. <clears throat> I think that is exactly what was sent over. I didn't even realize that. Well, that was good timing. Okay, cool. So we're gonna drop seven of these in. Let's go. Come on. I have the biggest challenge getting these to just getting these to sit right in the extrusion sometimes either there's a either there's a trick that i just don't know all right we're going from the side i feel like the m5 the m5 um drop-ins are much easier than these ones. Uh, my Enderfy Pro arrived yesterday. Nice. I have, um... <laughs> oops, these are wrong. I have your, <laughs> I have your box of parts, Steve, for the build. Um, it showed up this morning. <laughs> I am going to, <laughs> I'm gonna get them shipped out this weekend for you. Uh, use a driver in the hole to lever it in. Okay, good call. I feel like I've done that before and got paranoid when I was starting to let's use a cheap driver so I don't bend the Fabrica ones. Um, I felt like I was scratching the extrusion. Uh, oh, they got relayed through you. <laughs> yes. Yes, they did. I, I not entirely sure how. Um, I was like, I'm seeing double. I already got this, this box. So yeah, I need to get packing tape to just seal it. And then I'm going to get it, get it run off this weekend for you, man. It was, I, I'm just uh, going to chalk it up to, um, set, I wanted a second set of uh, QC and I, I looked at everything. It looks great. Um, hopefully Charlie doesn't mind the smell of dogs. <laughs> yeah, I, I realized it right away though. Uh, my build isn't for a couple months. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I, I still want to get it out. Lisa, thank you very much for the five gifted memberships. Uh, let's see. Ray, uh, Skydown, you got one. Thiago's, Th Thiago, Thiago. Um, Kenneth and, hey, Brendan, you got the last one. Nice. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, okay, let's try it, try it. We're gonna try dropping one. Yeah, I still don't, I don't know. I don't like. <laughs> I've done it before, but I always feel like I'm scratching the extrusion. So we'll just slide these in since we can. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Oh, come on. The flat screwdriver is the best. Okay, maybe I'll try that too. I, when we did the same thing for the, um, maybe it's just depends on the extrusion. Like some are tighter than others. Cause I, I draw, I'm pretty sure I dropped them all in for both the Y rails and I had no issues just using my fingers. So either I've forgotten how to do it or something else. I don't know. Uh, 
Uh, you didn't miss much, Jose. I, I put uh, I put things on incorrectly. <laughs> we disassembled, we reassembled, and we are now uh, persevering. So uh, as far as, I guess just centering it, right? So is there an exact measurement for... Yeah, Scott measures it. Okay. If anyone knows what the distance is supposed to be, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just measure and see what it seems like I can get as the halfway point. Uh, they can definitely be annoying to get in. I think some of the nuts vary. Okay. Uh, it looks like the new x-axis extrusion has a different profile oh yeah a hundred percent that's exactly what it is okay well i'm not crazy i mean not in this instance at least yeah so looking at it from the side the like x shape has it's just completely flat on the end so there's no give as far as helping you turn the tina into place well on these ones there's a slight bit of a of like a chamfer on the end that once you start turning it, it helps pop in. Okay, that makes sense then. It's not it's not a me thing, it's the extrusion's different and it's a little less. Okay, so let's see if we center this roughly. I guess let's, what am I doing? Let's get the screws in first so that way it's not rolling around all the place. Okay, that makes sense. It's on a V slot, it's a T slot. I, uh, I center it, don't, I don't remember the distance. Okay, no worries. And then these are the bolts. So let's go ahead and drop these in. How did you, oh yeah, you can see that pretty easily from the side, I guess. Good call, thank you. All right, so let's drop you in. I was wondering. It's like, we just did this the other day and it was really easy to get these installed. Okay, slide over. Merry Christmas. Hey, Merry Christmas, Lisa. <laughs> I got um, a set of new wireless mics coming in. So Aaron, Aaron's gonna be mic'd up for the, for the 100K stream. So I'm excited. The last time she helped out with a stream, I only had the one mic and it doesn't do a great job of picking up, it doesn't do a great job picking up other people's audio. So it'll be cool being able to hear her. 2.0. What the? 4.0, 2.0, where's my last driver? 1.5. There you are. All right, so I'm going to do my best to space these out. Uh, the best way I could suggest would be measure it on, measure it from each end until they're equal. Yeah, that's exactly what it, I, was, I think the game plan is in my head right now. Um, start off with eyeballing it, then measure, Measure both sides, see how far off we are, and just kind of like wiggle back and forth a couple times until uh, until we get to where we need to be. Oops, I went a little too far. Okay, that seems about right. Let's see if these will...
Okay. Amazon packages got there in one piece or two. I think everything has been fine, but I don't know. Are you talking about baby stuff, Gunner? If you are and you want to let me know what the item is, I can let you know for sure. Uh, we've had some delays. Like one item, we've had a lot of delays. Um, but yeah, everything that has shown up, with the exception of the first the crib, the first crib we got in was just completely damaged. Um, okay. But yeah, everything else has been not damaged. <laughs> the opposite of damaged. Uh, do you have the lav mic for that yet? For for the road or no? So I, I um, the, the setup I bought is the DJI setup. Um, I did I did a lot of digging into it, and as much as I like this, there's a lot of benefits of the DJI over this one. So that's what I went with. I did not go with the lab setup. The lab setup would sound better for sure. Um, it's been more of a convenience thing for me. It's a little less convenient having to plug in the mag while at least I just like clip and go. But I, I um, if DJI has a specific one, maybe I'll opt for it. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure having a true, okay, so we've got 20, 20 point, oh shoot, 20.153. Okay, 20. <laughs> Scott. Thank you, Scott. Merry Christmas, Aaron and Little Bot. I think I think nickname Baby Bot is what we're going with. Um, I think I think Baby Bot. Okay, that side is definitely not long enough. Uh, let's see, twenty. Thank you, Scott. Um, I think nickname Baby Bot is what we're going with. You got any plans for Christmas, Scott? What are you doing? Okay, so we've got 19. Yeah, I like, I like baby, uh, baby Bond. I think that, hey, that's that's cool. I, I just saw that your, um, the donation has like a Christmas, Christmas setup. Okay, so we're at like 19, we're at, we're like just shy of 20 mil on this side and we are basically right at 20 mil on this side. Okay, I'm gonna just do one last tiny little slide to the left. Just like a little nudge, and then we're gonna go with it. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go with it. Th thank you, Scott. I appreciate it, man. It's probably all, all very likely going towards the, the, the baby stuff. Um, one thing I was gonna ask is, is there a so for these rails on the left and right um i'm assuming we're going to sort of center them <laughs> thanks uh thank you for the doll for nine zombie is that, is that a banana <laughs> working we're supposed to be in thailand work volun work told you that you're working that's so lame man i'm sorry to hear that what uh just vacationing in thailand Um, yeah, so the Y extrusions, I'm assuming we're going to align them or center them based off of us moving it. But for this one, is there clips? Like centering clips? Oh, there are. These guys. Oh, these get bolted? Um... Uh, visiting friends and family. You have family in Thailand? That's awesome. I, there's someone I know, I used to go to Thailand every couple of years. Um, you won't bolt them right now. Okay, cool, so I'll just attach them. Uh, one of those will be used as an X end stop later. Okay, sweet. So for right now, we'll just use them to align. Is there a second one? a second one? Is there supposed to be a second one or? Uh, 
I don't think I see a second one. I wonder if uh, um, I've got, will this work? This might be the same size. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> this is from the uh, rat rig build that I still kept the parts. I guess it's one for now. No, I've got, I've got, I've got it covered. <laughs> so, so my, uh, my hoarding paid off. Uh, yes, and I have property uh, there as well, just waiting to retire. And then uh, one last one, which, oh, wow, you're going to retire over there. That's awesome. I don't know, I know very little as far as, um, like, the landscape and climate over in Thailand. It, it's, I would, I think it, it's pretty humid, right? I gotta look, I feel like it's beautiful. Hey, what's up, Dutch? Um... Scott Rocks, go sub to his channel, another quality creator. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would not, well, with the help of uh, everyone else, I probably would have figured out to get together, but D D um, not Dutch, Scott's video build series on this um, was instrumental in, as far as giving me like a really solid base knowledge. And again, if I wasn't, if we weren't streaming this, I would just be following, although I am referencing his videos, but I would just be watching the video as I was building this. Uh, emulating. Oh, nice. I, I picked up a Steam Deck um, locally for like a, it was a Christmas gift to myself. <laughs> but I wanted to play games in my downtime and I haven't in a really long time and I don't want to like hardcore games. So I figured that a Steam Deck would be cool. And I also, I've been playing a few indie games, but I, I also have been emulating some N64 games. Really happy with the, uh, really happy with the steam deck it is a really cool piece of hardware hey what's up jason um i echo you sir scott is the man working on a custom dock port nice <laughs> you have downtime <laughs> not really steve <laughs> yeah not really i um i've been trying to because my typical my usual routine has been like, um, like work during the day, then eat dinner, hang out with Erin for a little bit, and then she goes to sleep, and then it's like night shift, which is usually from like nine or ten to two. Um, and I usually work up until I burn out. Like not burn out, that sounds bad. I work up until the point where I'm like pooped, right? I'm like I'm dead, I gotta go. Uh, but the issue with that is, is that like because I just went from working on project to sleep, it, it's really tough for my brain to not keep thinking about the projects and all these ideas and it's it's a terrible terrible thing so i'm trying to like ramp down and so now like half an hour or so before i'm going to bed i'll go out and just play a game on it that's really casual and it sort of helps me like just relax a little bit no, nothing like these have all been like pretty relaxing side scrolly retro not retro but like indie games versus i used to try that with like competitive shooter games and that also is a terrible way to wind down so uh yeah not a lot of downtime, <laughs> kind of forcing it. You can emulate anything. Yeah, it's nuts. I watched a bunch of videos. Um, enjoy the downtime before mini, mini bot arrives. Yeah, I think I'm gonna, I was telling Erin cause I was trying to get on the similar schedule to her, but I think I'm gonna keep the night shift uh, because it will be helpful if she goes to bed early, I can take the next shift as far as, you know, working on projects and stuff. And when the little man needs something, which I'm assuming will be all the time, I don't have to wake her. I can hopefully take care of it myself. Um, hopefully so we'll see i don't know i don't know guys we'll, we'll have this conversation in like six months erin erin says uh she anticipates like me live streaming with like a baby strapped to my side <laughs> so i don't know it'll be like steve's charlie but it'll be like instead of this little baby <laughs> i have no idea how it's gonna go i'm just gonna do my best and try to try to laugh as much as i can so Instant wind down for me is the power button on the TV. You mean turning on the TV makes you sleepy? I'll get you the zip file, the stuff you'll need, and DM you. Okay, yeah, sweet. Let me know, Dutch. I saw, yeah, I saw that even um, like Breath of the Wild played on it, which is sick. I have it on Switch, but I'd love to play it on Steam Deck. Uh, you will, a few months of no relaxing ever. 
Interesting. I'm, I'm not that way. Eh, it depends. I, we watch a lot of, um, crime, uh, crime stuff and that, yeah, I guess it just depends. If I'm watching projecty stuff like 3d printing, technical stuff or anything like that educational, then I, my brain typically doesn't wind down. But if I'm watching something that is like, I don't know, like a documentary of sorts, then yeah, I, I can usually zone, um, zone with that as well. Okay, it's going to get loud song next. We're going to switch over to... One second. Okay. Next, I'm assuming we are going to be doing the stacks, right? Yeah, so we're going to be building the stacks. And I'm going to reference this. I'm assuming these are just mirrored probably. Oh, this is also 1.1, 1 1.1.3. 1 um, okay, so let's start with the things I do know, which is that we need to drop some posts in. Uh, I mean, kids don't give you time off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is nice for now since Erin is home and not working, and I don't know how long that will be uh, or how long she'll, until she'll be like, no, I need to go, I need to work <laughs> because she just wants her space. Um, but uh, that should that should help a bit. Okay, so we're dropping you in here. We're dropping you in here. I'm just gonna do the same on the other side. Are these are these exactly mirrored? If I didn't just say that out loud, I thought it. Stacks are, this, are the same. Yeah, so mirrored, right? Oh, you're saying stacks are the same. Keep in mind that some of the small printed spacers have a little lip on them. Okay, lip goes up or lip goes down into the slot. Okay, let's um, let's see. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so let's look at the left side. Okay, so we've got big Looks like big guy, big spacer, shim, bearing, bearing, shim, and then little spacer. Oh crap, do we need four big spacers? I don't know if I have, did I print out four? Oh, please tell me I did. I did, okay. Uh, it goes, uh, the lip goes towards the tooth idler. Gotcha. Okay, so this is smooth, right? Uh, where are we at? Yeah, so one smooth, one tooth. And, okay, so let's go. Are these not the same then? Is that what you're saying to me? They look the same. Oh no, one is wider than the other. That's right, I remember Scott's video saying that one of them is wider. I'm assuming they should be tight fit inside of the printed part, right? So let's see. Um, looking at this from the left side, we've got big. Okay, it looks like that's a perfect fit with the big one. Hey, what's up, Killa? Uh, just popping in to say hello. Hey, happy Wednesday. It's snowing? It is snowing. Yay. Oh, I love the snow. Uh, hopefully it all goes well. Yours is already 27. <laughs> yeah, hey, your kid's almost as old as me. Uh, when the kids were little, I learned to appreciate the small things like quiet and sleep. I feel like I appreciate that now, but I'm sure it will only increase. Okay, so let's do the shims. We're gonna make sure we're using the new shims. Did I close my trunk? Oh my God, I, I, I did. Aaron actually, uh, that Erin went grocery shopping last, so she she would never leave a trunk open. <laughs> that's that's very much so a me thing. Uh, hey, what's up, Wex? Uh, from Finland. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Aaron. Uh, there you go. Okay, shim. Bearing, bearing. Bearing. 
and shim. And then on top, is there another? Let's see. Yeah, so there's a tiny little printed part. Oh, you guys can't. God, I keep forgetting that. There's a tiny little printed spacer, it looks like, up top, which I should just be referencing this. All right, yes, 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 and yes. On the other side, we have no shims. It's just the these little guys. And there is, it looks like I see the little, ah, there it is. There's that little lip that you're talking about. Okay, cool. So the bigger ones don't have any sort of lip it doesn't look like. Hey, CNC maker, uh, just wait until May when you get another snowstorm. You may not like it. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> so far, at least, um, because we just didn't grow up. Like, I mean, we had snow in California. Okay, I see this side with the lip. We had snow in California, just not right where I lived. It's been super exciting. But yeah, I anticipate there'll, there'll be like a breaking point, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Every time geese fly overhead now, I'm super excited too. And we had geese in California, but like, they're way more aggressive here. Uh, I don't mean like attacking you aggressive, but just um, honking a lot louder and doing a lot more things. And it's super exciting. All right, so this goes here like so. And then we've got the big, um, or I guess it's the thinner of the two. And this one also has a lip, it looks like. So lip goes downwards facing towards that. Awesome. And I think that's, I think that's it for the side. Let's, let's tighten this guy down. See, California got six, wait, 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 six feet of snow? All right, and this is going to go, nope, I am being a goofball, it's the wrong one. This is the right one. Okay, drops on top, like so. Perfect. Beautiful, that looks really good. All right, and so for these we need, looks like M3 bolts that are really long. Um, let's see, what are these? Does it not tell me the name of it? I wish it did. Number 10, 10 mil? No, nope, that's not bad. Uh, all the M3 bolts on the top also use a plain M3, M3 washer. Okay. Uh, where is it? Left rail. Assembly one. Left rail. Bam. And these are going to be M3 by 30s, right? Yeah. Okay. M3 by 30s. And you said that they're all going to use washers. So one, two, three. Yeah. Everything has a washer on top. Uh, M3 by 30s. 20s, 25s, 30s, and then M3 washers. We have plenty of these. Uh, let's see. California is half mountain. Yeah, it, it's true. I mean, the, the area I lived in and I grew up in is desert. Um, so we, we, I don't think in my entire life we ever had a snowfall there. Um, uh, there might have been one year where there was like an inch and everyone freaked out, including me. Uh, but yeah, close by, like my parents have a cabin that's about 45 minutes to an hour away and they get snow there. It's a much higher elevation and my dad uh, snowboards there like every single week during the winter months, so. Okay, so now we're gonna drop these. Uh, also, 10 minutes till we open up the Polymaker giveaway, so if I forget, someone please remind me. All right, we're going bolt, then washer, right there. Bolt, then washer. Uh, Sweden here only got about uh, 1.5 inches to, oh wow. So pretty, has it been a late, late season in Sweden then? Uh, this is two, so we need 2.5, that is you. And we will tighten these. Wait, what's the... Oh, shh. 
shoot. Dutch. <laughs> I missed the, um, there's a T5 or an M5. Yeah, yeah, did you? <laughs> okay, I just looked up and saw chat. Did you add another T? No, I did not. <laughs> I was looking over, I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, so we need an M5 T-nut, and it looks like we want that to slide in roughly like this. <laughs> I'm like, Dutch save me the... <laughs> All right, and it looks like it's slightly offset to this, so let's do... Okay, the only thing I want to make sure is that the M5 is... Let me just grab one of these long ones. Aligned. Uh, we got like 15 inches earlier. Oh, wow. Like three weeks ago. Okay, so you guys have had some. Uh, let's see. All right, I'm going to leave. <laughs> it is aligned then. Uh, top and bottom zombie. Hey, what's up, Jason? Hi, boys. Who could teach me what is 0G? Uh, zero G is in the chat. So I would say either, um, either Dutch or, um, or turtle or, or Scott. Happy Wednesday, Jason. Happy almost, uh, almost Christmas. 10 days, 10 days before Christmas. Also massive. Thank you to Jason. Um, Jason is sponsoring one of the one of the grand prizes for the 100k stream. I, uh, I'm not gonna say what it is yet, but massive thank you, Jason. Jason is just awesome. There we go. <laughs> Jason, Jason can't say the prize yet. It's a secret. No, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. Ah, uh, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. We'll wait. <laughs> I don't know how I want to announce the prizes, or if I just want to announce the sponsors. Like, I'm thinking about maybe just announcing the grand prizes at the beginning of the stream, and then for all the prizes prior, just announcing like the sponsors, but not what the item is, because I have a cool idea for how we're going to be doing the. Um, prizes at least i think it's cool okay <laughs> 500 by five. yes it's a <laughs> it's a one meter v0 <laughs> okay um that we've got that all right so now we need the m5 which is just an m5 by eight probably m5 by eight i'm assuming that's what it is I lied. It is an M5 by 12. That's right. Uh, which do we have us out already? M5 by 12 we do. <laughs> One meter V0. <laughs> um, <laughs> all What a ridiculous build. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any M5 washers, so we're just going to use the old shims because they're basically washers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I like I like surprises. I mean, I, some elements of it I like sharing, but at the same time, I I, I I love surprises, but I also am like terrible at holding them in. I'm like, I just want the person or people I'm trying to surprise to be like to know the surprise, so it's so we can enjoy it. But yeah, I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. I believe we added another um, prize as well. So now there's three printers, which is awesome. Okay, this is in place. Uh, so now we just need to do the same on the other side, which should be quicker. Usually I get better once I <laughs> once I do the thing once, but uh, we'll see if I jinx it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Oh shoot! Jason gave away. Jason gave away the prize. <laughs> uh, uh, go zero G. Go 100K. V zero S one giveaway on the celebrating party. Th 
thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much, Jason, uh, for the uh, donation and, and for the contribution towards the stream. Yeah, I okay. So that's one. That's one. I, I won't say anything else. But the uh, grand prize LDO is providing the new V zero point one S one, which is an awesome. The V zero as it's in itself, the original V zero from LDO and the original one I source sourced are awesome. But this one comes with some pretty sweet upgrades. So. Uh, really, really, really excited. Thank you, Jason. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be such a fun, obviously they're giving away Ender Stream, Ender Threes, yes. Yes, the actual grand prize is the LDO, uh, LDO Ender Three. <laughs> oh man, I, uh, it caught me off guard. <laughs> okay, okay, let's, let's get back to it. <laughs> oh, yay, yay. All right, before I forget, we're gonna throw in this V0T nut, um, so that way I don't have to disassemble things after I've assembled them, because I'm really good at that. All right, and then on the inside, so inside is going to be the, should be the little guy, right? Let's see, you go on the other side. If they're the same. Okay, so big one on bottom. That's right. We need to flip the direction. Uh, and you said it's the one that has the little lip, which looks like this guy. So, um, inside, yes. S1 stands for super fly. <laughs> yeah, it would be it would be pretty funny if LDO made an Ender three, even just for like uh, the meme <laughs> the meme of it. All right, we're getting lower on hardware, which uh, it's usually a good sign in a build. <laughs> All right, and then we need the last little spacer that's for this guy. Let's see. All right, this one has the lip, which will go that way. So then the other side, we are going with the. Shorty first. Okay, yep. So we'll go shorty. Make sure I did this right on this side, right? Uh, up high, down low, and then up high. Yep, cool. A fully linear rail Ender 3 clone, call it the Lender 3. Aldia Ender 3 is a Cartesian switchfire. Yeah, I, I do think that that's my favorite Ender 3 conversion. Um, I covered the Exoslide in this last video on the main channel, and I do think the Exoslide's rad. And I think that for a lot, the Exoslide Extruder and Hotten is probably the more viable setup than the entire motion system. I do think it's a cool motion system, but just the cost is real comparable to a Switchwire. Um, however, if you don't want to the, the switch wire is definitely more work, right? Like you have to print parts and there's just a lot more involved with it. Um, but I love my switch wire. I really, really like that printer. It needs a facelift. At some point we need to take it apart and finally install the stealth burner on it. Okay, I think that's right. And then we got one more shim. Hey, what's up, Carl? Happy Wednesday. Happy almost Christmas. I don't know how many people will be here next week with like Christmas just a couple days after or if people travel for Christmas, but uh, I'll be here. Hey, what's up, Nizo? Uh, my day is going pretty good. It, it has gone completely unaccording to plan, um, which is fairly common around here, I guess. Yeah, I planned on doing quite a few things this morning, which just did not materialize. Um, but we, we got new phones, which is cool. I've had an iPhone XR. Wait a minute, those heights are off. Oh, that's, I think that's right because, let me see here. One second. Did I goof somehow? Why are the heights off? Maybe I didn't goof? I don't remember the other heights being um, different. But yeah, we've, I've had an iPhone XR for like four years. And for me, being like a big techie person, um, I don't usually hold on to a phone for four years, but 
We finally swapped, but as part of the swap, we swapped from T-Mobile that I've had for like 16 years. I think my parents got me my first phone when I was like 14. Um, yeah, it's a Verizon because they had deals. And so we got, we got, I got an iPhone 14 Pro, which is awesome. But the process of transitioning over was a not a lot of fun. My brother did all of the legwork, but um, it, it was still, it was still a lot of work. So I was on the phone with Verizon for quite a while this morning. Um, or like waiting for that to happen, I guess more than, more than anything. Wait, am I screwing out the wrong rail? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to check really quickly here on the right rail if the tops, uh, let's see, right rail, top, nope. Stack, 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 washer, roll in, threaded, bottom. Wait, I'm doing, I'm a goofball. What am I doing? Okay, so what I want to get rid of is the top. Uh, where are you, top? Oh yeah, yeah, I feel like I screwed up. Why are, these look to be the same height sticking out while mine are not. What did I do wrong? We've got, Weird. Um, I'm going to still close this up and see. I just feel like the post sticking out of the top on both was the same. Um, the post, like looking at the top, this one seems quite a bit shorter than this one. And I don't remember it being like that on this side. One is higher than the other. Okay, I'm just goofing. There's no issue. <laughs> There's no issue. <clears throat> Uh, Verizon recently added the full Disney bundle. Yes, which is really cool. Um, T-Mobile had Netflix, but um, we were paying for Disney, so I wasn't able to cancel that, which is nice. Okay, cool, that's aligned. Uh, someone asked how the Honey Badger Rail is. I, I don't know. I mean, initial impressions, they seem fine. They were um, pretty much like pre-greased and stuff. I I'm still gonna add probably a little bit more grease to the rails after the fact. Um, but I, I mean, I'm assuming they're fine, but I haven't ran them, right? Like, I'm just, just this initial build, I don't have much feedback to give. Once we see all this thing's kind of moving around and performing, I can definitely let you know. All right, and we were doing M3 by 30s, if I'm not mistaken, for this guy. M325s. There they are. M3 by 30s with washers. <clears throat> I haven't tested them. I just ordered them from Fabrico. They're supposed to be very good. Yeah, I've, I'm sure, like, Fabrico has high quality standards. And if there were issues with the rails, he would not have it. Like, he would definitely get it squared away. So I don't doubt that they're high quality rails by any means. I just haven't ran them on anything. Um, everything's been LDO. Um, and then the we also did the rat rig, which was also well, not LDO or no, the, whatever rat rig provides, though. Um, inappropriate. Thank you for the $5 donation. Happy almost Christmas. Um, this reminds me of my Ender 6, which is still broken. Will I ever fix it? Do you know? What? Um, I don't remember what the heck happened to it. Our first conversation, I remember you saying that I thought it was working pretty well because you had, I think you had a mosquito. I think you had a mosquito set up on it and it was working well. And I don't remember what happened to it, if it was a flood or not. Uh, I've heard great things about those rails. Fabrico's awesome. Takes care of those that purchase from them. Yeah, exactly. If you, like, one thing I will, will say and can say confidently that, like, if you bought any product from them, be it, you know, Honey Badger or um, really any other thing he carries uh, or Fabrico carries and the team, uh, he, he would take care of any issue. Like, if there was an issue, no questions asked. So that's really reassuring in itself versus 
if you go with cheap rails um, from like AliExpress, well, one, shipping times are a lot higher. Two, if you have an issue with it, maybe you can get a refund, um, but it's still, it's still not going to be a fun experience and you're going to have to wait again for a long shipment. Well, like it's, it's much quicker and the customer support is awesome. So, uh, Hey, my army, congratulations. Hey, thank you. Random. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. It's still like, it's one of those things where, I mean, we were, we were at like, like 65 K or 70 K at the end of this year. So the channel has done insane. I think, um, uh, as far as like this year alone and it, not that long ago, it didn't even feel like it was something that was attainable. So it, it's nuts that we hit a hundred thousand and almost like doesn't feel real. I know that it did happen. <laughs> the numbers, the numbers state it. Uh, but yeah, it's absolutely incredible. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you for that. And everyone, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's everybody, right? Like it's a massive group slash community effort. Um, so thank you. I'm definitely really excited. Uh, I'm part of a YouTube channel called Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. We should get Honey Badger Voron. That's funny. That I, I think I've seen that channel, and at first I was like, is this like that Honey Badger? Uh, I bought a high wind rail to replace the AliExpress rail on my V0. I was dubious, but it's the best rail I've used by far. Interesting. I don't think I've ever used a high wind rail. Hey, Steve, uh, thank you. Thank you for dropping by. Happy Wednesday, and thank you very much for the five memberships, man. I will, I'm sure I will be in touch with you and I will be sending you tracking um, sometime in the next like week here, man. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Okay, so we should be good on that. Uh, the last thing we need is the M3, which is the M3 by 12. These are 10s, where is the M3 by 12? There you are. M3, M5, not, not M3. Oh my God, Steve. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> thank you steve uh steve gifted five more memberships on his way out uh alien carl jose matt and red giant thank you very much steve you are absolutely awesome i appreciate all the support and uh yeah i hope you have a wonderful day again i'll i'll be messaging you after <laughs> thanks brother all right uh i need a shim shim for the top or washer for the top, I guess, on the shim. Yeah, Steve's a legend. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> You're awesome, man. Okay. All right, everything should be tightened. The parts look really good. Yeah, I would like to try a high wind rail, uh, backtracking to the previous thing. I, I would like to try it just to see what they're like. I imagine just much higher tolerances, like the correct amount of balls in them, like just <laughs> a much better setup. I just became a sponsor, what does that mean? Uh, so one, it means that you're supporting the channel, but instead of uh, like, you can support the channel by, I think the price is, there's three different tiers of it, um, but I think it starts at $3 a month. Uh, but yeah, you get a cool logo next to your name. Your name is green and you get uh, to use the modbot emojis, which I wish would be spammed more often. They don't get used nearly enough, but you should have access to the modbot emojis now. And it, it just supports the channel. Uh, Steve, Steve gifted five, well, 10, but five more memberships. And so you got one of them. <laughs> All right, so we are good on that. Um, let's see. See what Master Scott does next. Uh, so building the stacks, building the stacks. Okay, front tensioners. We already did that, so we did a little bit different order. Oh, cool. So we just. Do I need to do anything else before I remove these brackets, or was that it? Just, just um, to have it have it straight while I was assembling it. It looks like you just take them off now. There they are. <laughs> there they are. Holy cow. Yeah, that's the most, that's the most robot, robots I've seen in chat. I was so excited when, uh, that's it. Okay, sick. I'll take them off then. Um, I was so excited when I got them made and then I was like, wait, they never get used because I wasn't live streaming very much on the, um, on the main channel. Uh, so yeah, it's nice, nice to see them. 
Uh, okay, so next thing we're going to do is we're just going to remove these. So these are just in place as we were installing both left and right side to make sure that these are parallel. Uh, and then we're going to slide this back and forth to um, basically, not square, but align the Y axis to this axis. And then we will tighten in our Y rails. Exciting stuff. Let's see, a little close up action. There we go. Oh, shoot. What am I doing? We've got spools for that. Let's see. There we go. Look at that. You guys are, you guys are taller than you were before. All right. Okay. Let's take off these bolts now. All right. Random question. And it's probably also partially because I am getting a little hungry. And Aaron warned me. She said I should eat before stream. And I, she, we did a little. Um, she made some like pita bread and hummus. But what's everyone doing? Or what does everyone... <laughs> hey zombie thank you uh thank you for the two dollar donation and the cool superman lemon mod bot and baby bot oh oh that's adorable yeah okay i like that um what does everyone do for christmas like as far as food goes that that i'm curious about so traditionally my family has either done like thanksgiving's your turkey stuff and and christmas is either the exact same thing but instead of turkey we do um uh, we do a ham, which is what uh, we're going to be doing this year. Even though it'll just be, uh, it'll be Aaron, myself, and uh, her parents that are coming to visit. And then the other thing that we would do was just a smorgasbord. A lot of times my parents would just um, go to like Trader Joe's and get a ton of different meats and cheeses and toppings and breads. And we would just sit around with this like insane. And there's my mom would always get some um, really bizarre stuff that was fun to try. She's definitely a uh, ex like it's not ex experimental but like adventurous she's an adventurous eater she'll she'll try like all the different things um i'm curious like what does everyone eat i'm just i don't know what the standard is okay big tam, yeah big tam ham nice nice uh oh giveaway yeah, yeah yeah oh snap i'm late sorry i'm gonna read all the foods in a second let me post this um our, our polymaker filament giveaway we'll have it run like 10 minutes longer sorry about that uh send copy Okay, so we are giving away a spool of Polymaker filament in roughly 25 to 30 minutes. I'm going to be pasting a link in the chat. And all you gotta do is fill out your... One second, let me pin it. Uh, it's just YouTube name, Discord name, and an email, so I can get a hold of you. And it's a spool of PLA, ABS, ASA, or PTG. Any color, as long as it's not abrasive. Chat is freaking out on the screen. Uh, to anywhere in the world, which is insane. So, yeah, definitely enter into that. Okay, now food really quick before I get back to this. All right, Big Tam, watch 3D printing videos for Christmas. Nice, nice. Uh, bone in French style rib roast. That sounds wild. I, I don't even know what that is, but it sounds great. Uh, for food, I just eat. Nice. Smoked ham or smoked prime rib. Yummy. Lamb. Lamb is great. Uh, Portugal sauce Lisbon is codfish. Interesting. I haven't had cod in a long time. Parents, oh God, Swedish meatballs. Yeah, my mom, uh, my mom is from Sweden and I, I like Ikea's frozen ones. I think they're pretty damn good, but nothing compares to my mom's homemade Swedish meatballs. That sounds incredible. Ham, potatoes, herring, and lots of wild... Oh my God. Oh, that sounds so good. Fish and french fries, what we had last year. My parents got tired of making turkey. That's fair. Uh, turkey, um, gammon? What is gammon? Uh, roast spawns, lots of veggies, nice prime rib. Um, entered... Horse soup with rye bread, turkey. God, I am. Ooh, woo. <laughs> man, that sounds great. <laughs> okay, I am torturing myself. That all sounds incredible. <laughs> oh God, lots of different things. Uh, ham definitely seems to still be the most common, but it's certainly not the only thing everyone's eating. Okay, so at this point, I'm just going to slide. Ooh, ooh, ooh. that that is that is smooth. I like that. That is really smooth. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna slide this back and forth and I'm basically just going to slide it to, I'm gonna slide it to the complete other end uh, and I'm going to tighten these because the front side's already tightened and by going with these ones next, it sh in my opinion, should help to align everything. And then we'll just slowly slide it up and tighten. I don't know if that's because of those printed brackets or what, but that is a very smooth sliding axis. Ah! 
<laughs> didn't mean, sorry, didn't mean to whack those. That's nice. I'm just gonna get butter roll, butterball turkey breast roast, yum. Uh, Lisa, Portuguese food is very uh, appreciated throughout the world. I've had, I'm sure, well, I've been, I've, <laughs> I've been to Portugal. It's been half a lifetime, uh, half of my life ago. Um, but I've certainly eaten Portuguese food, but I don't really remember a lot of what's specific to Portuguese. Is it, I can't remember. There's some similarities to Spain, right? As far as the cuisine. Cause I know, I think we drove to Spain from Portugal. Um, I liked Portugal a lot more. No offense to the country of Spain. It's beautiful. I just, it was, Portugal was very laid back. Um, people were so nice. Everyone was like super friendly. Um, but yeah, I remember there being a lot of farmer's markets where you're at. A lot of like olives uh, seasoned. I think that was Portugal. I'm, I'm almost positive that was Portugal. Uh, very much like, okay, yeah, yeah. Very much like Spain and Italy. Gotcha. Yeah, there was, I know there was a farmer's market right next to my uncle's flat out there. And... I feel like it was almost a daily market um, that we would go to. And there was there was one booth there that had, all they sold was olives. Uh, and they were all in just different oils and seasonings. And that was like what we would eat is, I mean, not, I'm not saying for, for like our meals, we had good meals. Not that olives aren't good, <laughs> but we, we would have that as snacks. Like as we were walking around, it was just like a bag of olives with like insane flavor. It was It was really freaking good. I, I love olives. I worked at an Italian deli uh, in California for a while and they had imported olives and I ate a fair share. I ate my fair share of olives. <laughs> Definitely ate my fair share of olives. All right. I think that's pretty good. I'm not clamping, but it's still pretty damn tight. Motion feels nice and smooth. Beautiful. Olives and olive oils are the best. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Sam? Uh, how much does the average Mercury build cost? Uh, I would say it heavily depends. Are you wanting to do Trident or um, not Trident, uh, Hydra and all that, or just the conversion on top with the tool head? So I think the conversion on top, depending on your, let me see here. It looks like we have 46 entries. If you have not entered into the giveaway, do so. There are a lot more than 46 people here. It is a free spool of filament and Polymaker is awesome. So sign up. I also delete everyone's info the second the stream ends. So there's no, like there's no list. There's no mailing list or anything like that. Um, okay, back to, sorry, rant. Uh, okay. So this is without rails. You'd want to get rails. So you're looking at, for the Ender 5 Pro 220, 200 to 220. Um, and that will get you the motion system. Then you have the tool head, which is an EVA tool head. So you'd want a hot end and an extruder, depending on how, you could probably get the tool head for around a hundred bucks, depending on how cost effective you are. Like if you go with an LGX Lite and you know, like a Revo, you're gonna be paying a lot more than that. But if you've got like a Dragonfly BMO or something like that, or uh, you know, whatever else, or something on hand, uh, you can probably do it for a hundred-ish. So I would say about 300 plus the under five, uh, which you can get returned, I think for 200-ish dollars. So, um, yeah, you should sign up. You should sign up, uh, <laughs> Dutch. <laughs> you should definitely sign up, man. <laughs> okay, all right. Two seconds of uh, drinking a sip of this, and we'll go to the next thing. Also, uh, I saw Sam that you're going to be building a 3D printed guitar, right? That's awesome. For you with the Elbow Orbiter V2 is amazing. I am so excited. I got the Orbiter from Jason himself in person at Murph and have not used it ever. So I'm really excited to test out that orbiter. Hey, what's up, Daniel? Best out of the TV. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, LGX Lite's also up there for me. I have one ready to be installed into something, um, and then I'm running one on the uh, V Minion, because that's what it comes with by default, and I really like it. It's been very consistent, and I like the repeatability of the little notch uh, system on it. 
Okay, uh, where is Scott? There is Scott. Thank you, I seen it when I posted, never paid attention before. <laughs> okay, so we are sliding. That was him removing them, right? Yeah. Cool, motion. Wait, what's he doing now? Oh, sick, yeah. So we're moving on, to, we're moving on the tool head. Yeah, that's exciting. All right, let's go to the next one, belt path and tool head. Sweet, all right, cool. All right, so. Is that? Okay, so let's go also jump over here because this does show at least the base part of the bracket. Um, Okay, so it looks like this is... One second, I'm gonna go back to the section for this just so I've got it, just part one? Nope, not part one. Uh, is assembly one? I'm starting to remember the names for them. There we go, assembly one, that's it, okay. So, belt clamp is just that little guy right there. We've got the front plate. Rolling T-nut, rolling T-nut, rolling T-nuts. Uh, rolling T-nut, M3, roll clamp, belt clamp, belt clamp, belt clamp. Okay, we're making progress. Okay, rear cable attachment, hex, hex, hex. Back plate is that guy. What is the top plate called? Um, you have a back plate, 5015 fan, rear cable. Okay, there's the cable caddy. Oh, okay, so this is, this is the guy. So it's just two parts then? And I actually think, um, let's see. Uh, let's see. So what I'd recommend is that you press the front plate into the MGN12 mount. Press the front plate into the mount. There's a slot for it. Okay. Okay, so this is the front plate. And the mount looks like this guy. Wait, this looks like, is the mount quite a bit different than this? Or maybe it's because of the version I went with. I don't, the mount, oops. Okay, because it looks like, from top down. Um, shit. It looks like this is the mounting piece. Um, and if the, so is that how it's going to be sitting? Oh, it's different because of the extruder, gotcha. Or is it, no, it has to be flat. So that's the base. Okay, so it does go like this. Oh, you're saying that it presses into it like that, like it, it's the slots top down like this, right? That's what it seems like you're saying. Um, let me look at this really quick so I can make sure that orientation is correct. Okay, yeah, so that looks, that looks right to me. Yep, yep. Okay, so we are going to just, beautiful, pop it in. Uh, we are in. All right, cool. So there's that. Um, and then it looks like the end stop is going underneath it. I know that Turtle sent me... Turtle sent me a image of the bottom that shows... Let's see. Open link. Yep. 
Okay, so I don't think that the limit switches that come with this have wires on it. They don't. So we need to solder, it looks like. Um, I wish I had long wires. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, it looks like there's a bag of wires. I'm probably just going to use these. Um, you need to solder. Okay, no worries. Um, it came with this, which I'm assuming is not intended to be used for the end stop, but I'm absolutely... Oh, it's the thermistor, but I don't need that thermistor because I'm using the Revo. Yeah, I think I'm just going to use the thermistor wire for the end stop. Um, unless... I guess I could use this... We'll use this. I bought a bunch of um, stepper motor extension wire, and that's probably a little bit better of a use of it. Okay, let's do that. I don't need all these. Yeah, I most of the wire I have is much thicker. I, I probably should order an assortment. Um, where is the clippers? Okay, so let's cut this. Like that, we'll just cut, we'll do black and red. And I'm gonna give myself pretty much the entirety of this for now, uh, cause I have no idea how long. This is an insanely ridiculous amount of length, so we, we won't be needing all this, but I'd rather have just a stupid amount for now um, that we can cut off later than figure out that I'm too short in the end. So let's get wires, cool. Let's grab our wire strippers, which are uh, here. I do think that um, it would be worth including, there's a lot of people, I mean, and I get it, um, a lot don't feel comfortable with soldering. And I think that it would definitely make it a little bit more accessible if the kit had pre-soldered end stops, or at least a pre-soldered end stop. I think most probably, oh yeah, you'll have to have a soldering iron to, um, <clears throat> to do the heat inserts, I suppose. But um, yeah, I know I've seen a lot of people comment about not feeling super comfortable with soldering, although, this is a lot less, doing something like this is a lot less intimidating than I, I uh, when I was learning how to solder initially, it was doing like video game mod chips and some of them were to small pads underneath like the uh, CPU of a con console. And there was a handful of times where I damaged pads or tore pads and destroyed stuff. So at least this is a lot less aggressive. Um, it looks like as far as wiring goes, oops, desktop. It looks like we're wiring on the far left and far right leg and leaving the center one open. So that's what, that is what we will do. Yeah. PS3 was, I never did the PS3. Um, my bro, I mean the PS3, my brother actually, it's funny, my, my little brother was into video game hacking stuff before I was, and he was he was doing like the, like the whole old GeoHot exploit. Um, for me it was, Originally it was a JTAG, uh, which was using, God, it's been so long, um, diodes, I believe, to, I, it's been a long time. I think that was diode and they were through hole, uh, which wasn't bad. But then when the RGH came out on slim consoles where you basically are sending pulses to the CPU to try to like freak it out. And so that way you can run it in like the glitched mode where you can send it unsigned code. That, uh, that was challenging for me at the beginning. It was very challenging for me. Soldering is like crimping. You need to practice. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. What do we got here? We've got, I'm probably going to tin both. Um, yeah. I've got a little bit of flux that I can put on. Hmm. 
I'm just going to dip the feet of this into a tiny bit of flex. Okay. Yeah, I don't solder very much anymore. Um, I like that I still can solder. <laughs> um, but yeah, compared to how much I was soldering for a while there, I don't solder all that much anymore. But it's very handy. It's a very handy thing to learn, especially if you're, I mean, really doing any kind of electronics. Where's the power? There we go. My resin is so old it came from. I just threw out my Radio Shack uh, um, resin core. Uh, I do still have though. It, it was gross. It was just. It was so old. Um, I do still have these gems though. These are these are from the good old days. This one's nearly gone. Yeah, I miss being able to run down to Radio Shack and just grab a like LEDs or diodes or whatever I needed. Okay. So we're gonna add a little bit of solder. Let's let it heat up really quick. Um, I've also got, where's my little, there we go, my cleaner. Yeah, design, PCB design is something I'm super interested in. Um, very interested in. I, I think I need still quite a bit more electronic knowledge um, to be able to design my own PCBs, but it's been on my to-do list for a long time. Uh, I, one thing one thing that's on, uh, I'm hoping I get it for Christmas, if not I might buy it, is uh, I don't really have any helping hands, uh, which would be nice for small stuff like this. Okay, so I have a little bit of solder on the end stop. I'm gonna add a little bit to the end of this wire. Um, yeah, it's basically, it's kind of like me to check. I know enough to be dangerous, but I would not be able to just like, design and be like, ah, I don't know if this is right or not. I know there's a lot of tools out there to help make the process uh, simpler. Should probably put some heat shrink on this too, huh? But yeah, I have, I have a pair of magnetic helping hands that I'm gonna be getting. If I don't get them for Christmas, then I'm going to order them, but they look awesome. I've used some of the printed ones and they definitely can help, but um, I just want a good set of the magnetic ones. Um, I miss old school Radio Shack before they became a phone store and went out of business. If you purchase, if you purchase Helping Hands, the Omni Fixo is top shelf. Huh, I don't think really I've heard of them. Uh, greetings, do so you recommend a good printer for a new user? I'm looking to print something bigger some bigger pieces and some costly projects. I don't know where to start 500 range. Oh man, bigger is, bigger is where it's tough. Um, because, um, like big, when you scale, you normally want, you know, more rigid frames and like, just, you need to beef things up to support bigger. Uh, the SVO six was mentioned, which I also, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if that was a serious response to your question or a joke about the, the build from the sky down, but, that is an awesome budget printer. Um, yeah, I need something to hold this down. Um, I think I'm going to try to wrap the end of the wire around the post a little bit to grab it to bite onto. This limit switch is really light. Um, but yeah, when it comes to larger, come on, larger machines that are budget, I don't know. Most of them are bed slingers at this point and I'm not crazy about massive ones. A lot of people seem to be really liking. Okay, I have an idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to just do it like this. A lot of people are liking the Elegoo, the new Elegoo Pro ones, and they have some fairly large models. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, so that might be worth looking into. I think it's like the Neptune Pro, and they have a. I think they have a three, I think they have like a 300 by 300, 400 by 400 and a 500 by 500. Don't quote me on the last one. Um, and, and I haven't tested them. Um, they are bed slingers, but if you were to go that route, that's probably what I'd recommend based off what I've seen right now. I don't do a whole lot of big printing, so I don't really have a ton of big printers. Um, for me, like 300 by 300 would be the biggest I'd realistically want. All right, 
those are fine. Let's add a little bit of heat shrink though, so I don't screw something up. Uh, SV06 is, yeah, SV06 is undersized. I thought you didn't like the KP5L zombie. I thought you, <laughs> I, th I swore, I swore that you, because uh, I know you like the KP3S, but I thought the, the KP5L had issues. Yeah, bed slinger, sorry. I, I3 style, oh, shit. Uh, where the bed goes forward and backwards, like a Prusa style printer. I don't like large printers that slide back and forth. Like I think 300 by 300 would be my preferred maximum. Um, not only are they uh, just not efficient in terms of space, because the bed has to go beyond the frame, so you need a pretty big depth to not hit your wall. Um, but you also, with that added weight, you're, you're gonna have to print slower because that much weight whipping back and forth is gonna create chatter and vibrations. Um, so yeah, I'm just not crazy about it. I, I would much rather have like a stationary bed or a bed that drops, um, similar to like how Modix has their big printers, which is, is <laughs> very, very expensive. Um, definitely much more of an industrial use case. All right, we are gonna throw, I guess we'll go with the yellow heat shrink. Mm. Let's see if black will fit. It looks like I'm almost out of, damn. Okay. Um, it's also 307, so five more minutes and then we're going to do the Polymaker, uh, Polymaker filament giveaway. So if you haven't signed up, for the giveaway, uh, it is pinned in chat, and you've got a couple more minutes. I will take the 5PL with the great motion system any day when the only major issue is some jank wiring and an outdated firmware. Gotcha. For some reason, I thought there was other things that you did not like. <clears throat> it's basically linear Rate, uh, linear rods, right? In a sense, but they're just in the extrusion. Yeah, we dropped it. All right. Um, heat gun is out in the garage, so we're just gonna quickly pass over it with a lighter. It's pretty much exclusively what I used for a really long time. Linear rods with supported and no ball bearings. Linear rods but support ends. No idea why everyone hasn't switched to it yet. Okay, so they are linear rods and no ball bearings. So what's the, are they a wheel? They're a wheel system then, right? Basically, that's what you're saying? It's just, it's a different, um, if I recall, I think they're a wheel system. Okay. The K the KP five L uses I guess bearings. Uh, inverted V wheels on linear rods, where the extrusion is also the frame. Interesting. Okay, so I have it then. They're metal wheels then, right? Okay, so we've got that. Um, does this just sit in place with those little notches? It looks like it. Uh, let me make sure I get the orientation correct. So it looks like... Okay, so if this is... If this is the front of it, then we want the limit switch to be sitting in here like this. It's just two little notches. Um, that sits like that, that goes like that, and then I'm assuming we just drop it and that holds it in place. Uh, two little bumps hold it in place. Okay, cool. Yep. So now I'm going to attempt to hold it in place with my hands. Okay. So I'm going to throw these wires 
over like this and then attempt to just set this down like that. And then do we know? What size? Uh. What size bolts are these? <laughs> I am not. Uh, let's see, M3. Oh, they're just M3 by 8, so okay. Alright, so let's get this bolted in. Um, does it need, does it use a... Uh... Hold on a second. Okay, so I got one kind of in. I just want to see, I don't think we use washers for this. Doesn't look like there's washers. Uh, you don't use washers. Okay, sweet. All right, so we're gonna bolt this in and then we will do our drawing. Did I put that in the wrong slot? Mm. Interesting. Okay, let's try to get it. Uh, the green inverted bolts. Why are my holes not lining up? Oh, I know why my holes aren't lining up, because this thing slides back and forth. I'm a goofball. Duh. Okay. <laughs> I need to get a better view of what I'm doing. Uh, this, it'd be nice to have a top-down view if, if, if I had this lower, so I can look down and see when I have things aligned, but that's what's going on, is that because this thing slides left and right, so it needs to slide more. Okay, those two are lightly in. Did I already drop one in there and that's what's happening? Yeah. Okay, so the block, there's, it's like an oval shape for alignment. Um, I don't know why, is that to trigger the end stop at different different distances? Dutch, um, is that if you need to stop it sooner, you can slide the whole thing a little bit more to one direction? It's kind of what I would think it's probably for. Definitely, could you <laughs> use a stool? All right, I think that's I think that's good enough for now. It's pretty damn snug. <clears throat> uh, let's see, some people have MG. Oh, gotcha. That makes sense. It's it's okay. So it's it should be centered then. I want it tight, but I also don't want to... 
Who are we fighting in? Let's see. Come on, last. this is the last turn I want to do on this one. There we go. All right, calling it with that. That's good. <clears throat> okay, I am going to remove the link for the giveaway. Uh, if anyone is filling it out, you've got maybe 60 seconds before I grab the names. And then we will do our drawing here. Let's see. <clears throat> How many entries do we have? 80, They're not too shabby. All right, 30 seconds and then I'm gonna grab them. If you're filling it out last minute, <laughs> do so now. Um, I wonder if anyone uses linear steppers on 3D printers yet. Linear steppers. I don't know. 80 entries, so that's nah, not bad. All right, 80 it is. We're grabbing it. Copy you. Let's go to Wheel of Names. Bam. All right, we have got all 80. Uh, too slow. Linear steppers would be too slow for X and Y. Gotcha. Uh, hey, we got the same number of likes and entry. Nice. Perfect. All right. So as always, uh, let's go. Let's go. A quick little face for anyone that's new. Um, Polymaker allows us to do a once a week giveaway on our stream, which is absolutely awesome. Massive thank you to Polymaker. They have been a huge supporter of this channel. And if you are looking to try a new filament or you're not happy with your current filament, Polymaker makes amazing filaments. And there's a link down below that if you uh, pick up some filament, it also supports the channel and lets them know that we sent you over there. So uh, yeah, it's. Awesome, they, um, Polymaker's just a really rad company. They support the community like crazy. And yes, I, the theme is food today. I am going to indulge in, in some food after this stream ends. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and shuffle this. Good luck to all. I will contact the winner later on today and let them know, um, I give them the form that they need basically. All right, three, two, one, here we go. Looks like John K. John K is our winner. Congratulations, John. I will um, shoot you an email very likely uh, today and that will have a form and you can fill it out and then Polymaker will send off, uh, send off some filament. There will definitely be a fair amount of Polymaker at the 100,000 subscriber stream. I anticipate probably more um, people tuning in so i don't know what odds will be like but there's a lot of prizes there, there's a lot of awesome prizes so hopefully uh anyone that is available on july nope <laughs> january january 4th can tune in and um yeah i don't think i don't think we're going to require you to have to be in the chat because it's just it's difficult it's midday and people are at work so i, I don't know we'll see i don't want to set anything so yeah, hey, there he is, John. Congratulations. Okay. Let's get back to the tool head. Um, let's see here. Hey, Buddha. Thank you very much for becoming a member. Welcome. Okay. Uh, let's see. I am... Yes, we should probably go back to the cab. All right, so we got the front part on, we got that part on. Now, okay, so two bolts go through here, and then they attach the back plate. Is that what I'm seeing? Cool. Okay, so let's grab the back plate. That seems like that would make sense to do next, if unless. Uh... Oh wow! Wait, 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 wait. Okay, so that looks like is what that looks like. That's what we need to do next. And are these? I'm assuming these are. No, those aren't the M5. Oh, what size bolts are these? Okay, so these are M5 by 35s. Uh, I suggest putting in two M3 by 8 bolts in in front in the middle.
uh, in front middle. These guys, it keeps the front plate you pressed in place into the carries round. Oh, these these guys? Or, no. These guys, top guys. Uh, you see the two heat sensors, middle, yeah, middle top. Okay, cool. Yep, yep. And we're dropping stuff, cause it's what we do. So, two holes up top we're gonna install these bolts into to keep the thing that's currently pressure fit from falling down. Okay, so plate, we should also probably zoom in, right? I can't really see that well. Let's go. We're going to be messing with the tool head, so we should be focused on the tool head. All right, so it looks like the next thing is long bolts, um, which are M3 by 35s going through uh, M335, M3 25s, M3 30s. Do we not have them, or did I just take them and misplace them? Okay, let's see what we got. We got M325s, M350s, M3 M5000s, M3 M3 At this point, I'm not sure if it wasn't in the kit or if I just put it somewhere. Definitely don't see any M3 by 35s. Yeah, I don't see any mention of them, so maybe that is missing. Um, hmm. I did grab. Let's see. Those are gonna be too short. I grabbed my screw organizers from other Voren builds. So let's see if we've got M3 by 35s, 25s. Of course, the, of course, the M3 35s are out. Um, well, that's a bummer. I don't know if we've got... Um, oh. Let's see what these are. Uh, the extra bag didn't... I poured those out. Um, those were, those were, looks like M5 T nuts, M3 T nuts, um, M3 by eights, and then there's like two longer screws, but I don't think they're long enough. Let me see here. Um, yeah, these are M3 by tw or 20s. Uh, these are too short as well. Damn, M3 35s, eh? That's that's a long bolt. Um, God, what do we have? Um, I've got 40s. We can go bigger. Have it stick out the back. Um, M3 by 40. Only two of them apparently. Socket head. I wonder how. Damn, I don't know if I've got it, guys. Okay, we have tw we have plenty of M3 40s. Um, let's see, 30s, 25s. Oh, it'll hit, it'll hit the fans. Shit. Let me see. Yeah, 
that looks big. Um, I'm curious to see. Okay, that was 40s. Um, I've got a bunch of 30s as well. I can't believe that 35 is, is the one size that I'm out of. Um, there we go, 30. Um, I have a Dremel somewhere. Ah, oh, it sucks. I'm bummed out about that. I don't think... Yeah, there is no 35s. Hmm. Let me, um... Let me think for a second. I'm gonna take my mic off. I'm gonna run out to the garage and see. I have a Dremel somewhere. Um, I don't, I don't use it very often. I'm not sure what it is. Let me see. Let me run out of the garage, see if I can find a Dremel uh, with like a cutting disc. And if not, and, and also see if I might have an M3 by 35 in a drawer somewhere out there. Uh, no. I didn't necessarily want it printing the stream, but I did want it pretty much finalized within wiring. Give me, let me, let me see what I got. Let me check one last spot in the garage. I'm going to grab my little, um, this little measurement gauge and see if I've got any 35s out there. Keep your fingers crossed. I've got a lot of random bolts. It's just the question is like, where the hell are they right now? Um, yeah, let me see what I find. Is it in four and 35s? Okay. Uh,
We don't have it. Ah. Uh. I um don't have any, at least not that I can see out there. Um, I might be able to cut them. <laughs> We can try as like a last resort. I feel like I'm <laughs> making making some good progress on attempting to cut them. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Not a very clean edge, but <laughs> the bottom two bolts. I'm pretty worried they don't hit anything. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Uh... Okay. Well, I chopped, and that one's just down to 38 now. I shaved off two mil with that. Yeah, let me, let's see, let's see if I can do this. I need your strength, Dutch. Dutch is, uh, <laughs> Dutch is way buffer than me. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's like a 30, it's pretty much a 35. <laughs> Uh, put a nut on before cutting. Oh, so you can unthread it after? That's a good idea. Let's try that. Um, where the hell are the M3 nuts? Uh, run it through stock up not to deburr the threads. Yeah, that's, that is an awesome idea. Thank you. All right, we'll go full screen so you can watch me struggle. God, don't fling off and hit me in the face. There we go. A little bit more. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Safety. <laughs> yeah. uh, I wouldn't recommend, I would recommend if you don't have the right size bolts, um, I would recommend ordering the right size bolts or reaching out to Fabrico. Holy crap. Will I even be able to get this off? Less than ideal. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't know about this. <sighs> uh, I will definitely do the Hydra mod. Yes. That I will do. All right. I may end up just doing the top ones. Um, if Dutch, if you're saying the bottom won't be an issue, at least until we get the right ones in. Yeah, I did a pretty good job of cleaning it up actually. Okay, so we'll do one more. Uh, 
Uh, it won't be an issue. Okay, we'll do one more and then we'll try that. Uh, this stream will come in handy when I get around to locally do mine. Have the kit for a few weeks, but now I'm finally going to be beds. Just Hydra. Nice. Uh, looks cross I need to file chamfers on the end of the screw after cutting it. This show threads get repaired. We may end up, I mean, if that's the case, we may end up having to call it. Um, I don't have, I'd have to go out in the garage and figure out where the file and stuff's at, which is a little bit more than uh, I plan to do right now. I also didn't put a bolt on that one. That one was much easier to cut. Um, sucks i thought for sure we had all the pieces um yeah the one way is to have a knot on first and unthread it afterwards to fix the threads yeah let's try one more <laughs> i've got a lot of these all right last one This one is tough. There we go. Okay. So this is a good one. Okay, uh, worst case you reprint the black uh, back plate. Okay, cool. Let's, let's do it then. So, top piece is where we're going with the short guy, right? That's what we decided. Um, so let's put this plate on. At least get this started. Oh no, it's not gonna fit. Ah! Okay, it does fit. It's threading. Take a little bit to get on the, um, it's starting in the wrong hole. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw Dutch. Thank you. Part of it, part of it is also that with the angle I'm going at for the sake of the camera, it makes it where I can't really see. But yeah, thank you. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. I'm confident it's going to work though because of that. Yeah, air going in. <laughs> Let's try the other one now. Oh, shit. Why is this one not threading? Oh, it's probably because the end is still a little bit wider than it should be. Yep. 
Yeah, that's not... It's spinning pretty easily. We're just going to keep spinning. Just keep spinning. It's spinning easily, but pushing is... It's being... It's being a jerk. All right. Moment of truth will be if it threads. So I'm going to go around so I can make sure I'm aligning it correctly. Oh, let's see. Feels like we're gripping. Um, try not to drop the camera. It's still, st oh, shit, man. It's still sticking out of hair. It might be, it might be okay. It, it's the end. I think I had it at like. It's exactly like 35 mil exact is what you need. And I think that my cuts are like 37. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's sticking out of hair at the top. Let me grab a fan. Oh, it's yours. Yours is. It's okay if it sticks out of it. Okay, one millimeter. I mean, I'd say it's definitely making it a slight more gap than there's supposed to be, but it's. Still probably fine. I don't really think it'll affect much. We'll, we'll roll with it. I'm, I'm good with it. <laughs> it's the cards, it's the cards we've been dealt. I don't have, I don't have any, uh, it must be a hot, a hot size because the, the drawer I have for M335s are all gone. So I, I don't know what other, what other situation I would have used them. Okay, so now we need on the bottom. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so on the bottom part, there is sort of like a brace piece that looks like it's going to be in white. Yeah, this guy. Okay. Perfect. Things are falling. All right, so for this one, we're just going to go with the full... Um, 40 mil screw. Like that. Uh, can bus, not can bus on this. No, nah, just regular. Okay. Um, All right, let's see how it looks. Right. 
it honestly doesn't look bad at all. It's the printed parts black and or dark gray, which is nearly black. And then with the fan there, it's as long as it doesn't obstruct anything, which it doesn't look like it's going to. And the uh, jinky ends of my bolts that I cut are completely hidden by the back of the fan. So I don't really think it's going to be any issue at all. So. Uh, not canvas, but the Modbot bus t-shirt. <laughs> I, I love I love the Marmot t-shirt. Hey, what's up, Mike? <laughs> All right, so that, oh yeah, belts, basically just belts, right? And then attaching the, um, uh, what did I do? One second. <clears throat> yeah i think the next big thing is really probably going to be the belts belts is the fun part oh god <laughs> so it looks like the slack gets pulled from right here okay yeah let's uh Let's do the belts. If we can get the belts done, I think I'll feel pretty happy with um, leaving it off there um, for next week. Because if I do that, then next week it'll just be finalizing tool head wiring and hopefully firmware. Um, and I will very likely, <laughs> knowing myself, I'll probably order some M335s. <laughs> I, I know I'm saying it's not a big deal and it's really not, but it's just like, I don't know. I, I, I kind of want it to be, uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So for the belts, I think they're in here. Belts. Okay. I think I just need to cut the belts in half. That is, that is what seems to be the, the play to me since they need to be the exact same length. And there's only two belts for this entire thing. I did a bad, I did a bad thing. I just upgraded the S3DB5. First thing I see acceleration control, finally. I, I, so I've had Simplify V5 for a couple of weeks. They reached out asking if I wanted to test it out. And I had only used, I, I, I never had purchased the license pre, uh, no, I never pre purchased it previously, but I got to use it at work a little bit and I was like, yeah, I don't know. So testing it out these last couple of weeks, I actually really like the slicer. Um, do I think that most should go out and buy a slicer with what's out there already? Probably not, no. Um, but I definitely see why people at least do or did like it. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying using it. It does a lot of what I need to do, but unless you have a good reason to buy it, the, like it's, the free options are really solid, so. Yeah, I am. Um... Oh, route it first and cut it after. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. All right. Maybe I should just keep it as is. Um, don't cut yet. Put one side in first. Okay. Thank you both. I will do that then. Yeah. I so I've been looking at uh, cam software quite a bit lately, and it, it's incredible to me. Like, there's like hardly any free cam softwares, and the ones that are out there are like pretty damn complicated. Um, and the ones that are paid are like $300 would be inexpensive. And most of them, I mean, a lot were like seven, eight, a thousand, 2000. So it just partly looking at all that made me think like, huh, maybe, uh, like, like it, it sort of justified paying a bit more or paying for a slicer. Cause I'm like, wow, like it's actually quite inexpensive compared to every other technology, but that's not a really good justification. And I agree that there are a lot of fantastic free slicers out there. Um, okay. So let's start with the 
top right. So it looks like top right. Yeah, let's start with top right. SLCAM is. SLCAM is not free though, right? SLCAM is the one that's, I think it's like 60 bucks. That is probably the only um, inexpensive version that I've seen that seems worth checking out. And I have heard good things about it. Um, okay, so belts going this way. If I put the tensioners on right now though, then I won't be able to why not use Cam and Fusion 360? So when Fusion started changing up their license stuff all back, I kind of mass exited Fusion. I haven't used Fusion in a really long time. I know it's a powerful, I actually don't have the tension any of it right now. I could just run it. Um, But yeah, I just haven't used Fusion in a long time and kind of had written Fusion off, um, which is sort of why I'm using like Shaper 3D and Onshape. Uh, so I don't know. I could though. I know it has fantastic cam. And if you... Okay, the struggle bus here. What's going on? Okay, there we go. I guess I don't have to tension it right now, but I can still put that piece on just to kind of hold it in place while I'm doing this. Onshape is good, but everything you make is publicly searchable. Yeah, I know. I For a lot of things, I don't care because I'm like, yeah, this isn't like stuff I'm making to sell and it's all gonna get shared on YouTube anyway, but uh, there's there's definite um, downside downsides to that. Uh, this looks like what, um, what bolt size are we using for this? It looks like it's, M well, it's definitely M3 and it's short. I think we're out of M3. No, we have one M3 by eight left. I think this is our final one. That's why we rename it random stuff so people can't find it. <laughs> This is too small. Yeah, on shape, um, I have quite enjoyed using that. But again, that is a downside, especially for people designing things for sale or you know whatever reason they don't want it public. Um, that it's all public facing if you know how to find it. And I think the paid license is pretty damn expensive. I I, I did look into it. Okay. That's in place. We've got a little bit of slack on there, which is fine. Um, and then we can continue to route this. So, bum, bum, bum. this is a long belt. <laughs> this is a very long belt. Okay, going through. Okay, so it's going through. Man, I haven't, it's been a minute since I've routed a, uh... Okay, so through and around and then back out. So. Oh my god, yeah, it's expensive. Fusion still, yeah, yeah, Fusion does still have the hobbyist license. Yeah, it, it just sort of, um, I don't want to use the word scared me, but like, I didn't like when they were making a bunch of changes. And then they, they've been going with like, I think some sort of like token thing now with different modules. It, it's, oh shit. 
I thought I had plenty of space with this workbench, but I appear, I appear to have mistaken. Okay. But yeah, I'm not, Fusion's a fantastic piece of software. There is no denying it. I know that their cam is also great. Uh, SolidWorks also has a maker license now. I need two people to put on belts. Uh, need two people to put on belts, at least on the 5+. plus. This one goes around the stepper. Yeah, yeah. So through here. Around here. Back around the post. I realized chat is like right over where the, the thing I'm doing. Come on. Come on, belt. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this is such a long belt. All right. You go there. These guys need to go up around the bearings. And around the stepper. Like so. And then like that. Sweetness. Okay. Don't fall. Okay, so around the top of the bearing. and then through this side. Okay, so facing outwards, top of the bearing. Oh geez, don't fall, please. <laughs> There's so much crap everywhere. Get out of the way. Okay, so this one's just riding around the top. Then it's going through, through this side. Let me pull it so we've got the right end of the belt. When you had Hydra, this will be heavy. Yeah, I, I picked up, I stacked all the parts for the Hydra in this inside of this um, to try, sort of like save space, keep everything together. And I went to move it for, I don't know what reason I did. Um, okay, we're gonna let this fall, it's okay. And it was not fun. It, it was, it's very heavy. This is definitely not a travel, travel printer. Okay. And we have fallen. That's okay. And we have twisted, not okay. All right, what happened? The belt should be outward like that. And we're back in business. Okay, so I'm going to add the other tension block or I don't know, retaining, whatever we're calling it. I'm calling it tension block. That's not, I know that's not right. I'm gonna add the other thing that holds the belt in place. Go. And then I'm going to confirm that I didn't screw anything up as far as my belt path goes. Like that. Like that. Don't screw with me, Jose. <laughs> don't play, don't play with me. I did check it. Ah. Oh, come on. There we go. I did it. Okay. Um, I think it was a 2.5 that we needed for this. Oh, 
All right. So. Very out of focus. Sorry for that. So this looks good. It's going over the bearing. Uh, this side is going over the bearing, which is what we want. This side is not going over the bearing. It has fallen. So we need to correct that uh, like that. No, it is going over the bearing. Now we have some slack though, quite a bit. We need to fix that. And then that looks good. That looks good. Yeah, everything else looks good. So uh, let me loosen. Hey, what's up, Polaris? Uh, definitely going to do this on my 5 Plus and New Year's when the complete kit is available again. Yeah, it should be um, it should be pretty soonish. Like I said, I, I just talked to Fabrico. Let me loosen this little. I pay for Fusion and hardly use it. Oh man, what is, what is the Fusion license cost? Is it? I think I want to say it's like six hundred a year, right? Tension then later. Okay, all right. I'm gonna loosen it a tiny bit then. I, I that's right because I have that little um, tension accessory thing. Otherwise, it'll be super hard to put the other belt in. Okay. Okay, so on this side, I'm just going to leave a little bit of slack, and then on this side. Is there any reason I should keep um, quite a bit of slack or no? I'm thinking like so, I don't know how well you can see that. You can't see that at all. Um, this is, I, I don't know, maybe like 10 mil sticking out. For now, yes, okay. So for this side, I will keep maybe like that. The other side, I'm not really too worried about. I would assume as long as I have enough length on one side that's gonna be pulled, um, that it's fine. Two centimeters is enough. Okay. Yeah. For this one, I'm just going to cut then. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll just cut it somewhere right around here. Let's just go with like, right there. That's plenty. Okay. One belt is on. Let's get the other belts. Yeah, there's definitely these. I think that Fabrico supplied lots of extra belts. That's my, based off how much I've left, I, that's my initial, uh, oh shit, I'm dropping parts. Okay, let's get this back. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. Should have done that before. I don't know why I was zoomed in. Nope. <laughs> Come on, camera. You can do it. All right. Okay. Uh, what did I drop? Dropped an M3 by eight. Another M3 by eight. That's where all the bolts are going. Okay. Second belt. Let's get it started. Let's start uh, from the left this time. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So there's tons of belt. Hey, what's up, BBs? Uh, has anyone brought up? As for the, it's been half a decade. It looks like they're still playing catch up while having got for sixty bucks. First thing, there's literally no advantages. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit. I was saying that they had reached out to me and I've been playing around with it for a couple weeks and that I've actually really enjoyed using it. Um, my The difference with my perspective is though, I had never really used it before. Um, so I don't have much of like like a past, like I don't really have much past feeling towards the company. Well, some people really strongly do. Um, so that's definitely a difference for me. But um I've really enjoyed using it. Do I think it's leaps and bounds above the free versions? Absolutely not. I think that, you know, if you like the free versions that are out there, a lot of them probably have quite a bit more than even this Simplify V5 does. But I do like a few things about it in terms of the overall sort of interface of it, as well as there's some nice features like um, the, The fact that it has like a printer controller terminal, although I don't use it very much anymore uh, because most printers are wireless, but I like being able to hook up the printer over USB. Like it's a lot nicer than Pronterface. I mean, I don't think it's bad, right? Uh, I don't think that the the software is bad that I've played around with and it's worked quite well and I've enjoyed it, but 
at the same time, there's so many great free options that it's sort of, I think it'll be hard for a lot of people to justify. And it's really gonna depend on what they do from here on out and how often they update from this point forward, whether they are able to attract new customers. But there's still a lot of people, uh, both professionally and, and the hobby that use that slicer because they prefer it. So I don't think, I, okay, let's not worry about that. Let's, let's just route the belt and I'll focus on mining after. But yeah, um, Shaka Smoothie didn't touch the UI at all. Very dated, look for a $200 slicer. Yeah, the UI is identical. Um, I honestly like the UI quite a bit more than Pusha Slicer or Super Slicer. Like, I, I'm not a huge fan of those UIs, if I'm being honest. Like, I, that's why I used Kira for a really long time is I think, and a lot of people don't like Kira's UI. So UI is definitely a big personal preference thing. Um, but I, I, I understand that because a lot of their customers are probably in like more, not industrial, but like, like let's call it professional customers, right? Like they're doing it for a living that maybe they don't want changes in terms of where things are because that's going to piss them off after using it for eight years. Uh, good night all making dinner. Hey, thank you very much, Lisa, for hanging out. Um, and for the five gifted subs, have a wonderful night. Enjoy your dinner. I can't find a single feature they have that is truly special slicing wise. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. When they sent over their specs to me initially, I was hoping for more groundbreaking things as well. Um, there's obviously, there's a lot of quality of life improvements and there are definitely improvements that bring it closer to where the free slices are at. But like, there's nothing in there to me that screams like, oh my God, like this is incredible. All like free slicers are no longer relevant. Like not even close. And so yeah, we'll see what happens moving forward. Um, I, I enjoy using it, but I don't think that it's it's um, anything nuts or that's not available in a free slicer. So, okay, all right. Uh, initial initial rant slightly over. All right, so we're gonna go belts facing outward again, which we did. Cool. And then this is going. Hey, zombie. Hedgehog makes. When did you change your name? When? Wait. When did you change your name? Thank you for the donation and the banana. Did you have it change this entire stream and I just didn't notice? Yeah, I like. I have liked Kira a lot. A lot of people don't like the like accordion design of it, but to me, it's like everything's right there. You don't have to go to different pages. I mean, they're all like. They've all started to grow on me, really. Like it's just you know enough, enough use with one, and then all of a sudden it's like okay, well it's not that bad anymore. Um, but yeah, I don't think like to me, Prusa Slicer aesthetically or, or UI wise doesn't do anything for me. Like it's just tabs and pages. Like it's I don't think it's very aesthetically pleasing. The the actual model page is fairly nice. Um, but yeah, as far as the settings go, I don't know that that's great either. But it works. It's you know quite functional. Uh, I, I think Kira is sluggish as well, and it's gotten worse. Like, I'm on Mac pretty exclusively now, and it's not great on Mac. It's even worse on, like, um, on the M1 chip. It's quite bad, actually. Like, I've had issues with freezing and uh, originally crashing, which it seems like that's been resolved. But, yeah, I think Precious Slicer is a faster slicer and Super Slicer. Okay, so this is going down here, and then... It's been a minute. I feel like it goes. Uh, yeah, in bearing around, and yeah, that's right. That's, that's what I what I thought. Uh, if you enable all features, switches in Kira, finding stuff is a nightmare. The UI becomes very unresponsive. I like to fiddle with very low level steps, so it's not for me. That's fair. Absolutely fair. Um, yeah, there's so many settings. Uh, like I. I don't typically in my normal day-to-day -day printing screw with like 99% of that stuff. Um, but yeah, I could absolutely see that if you are in it, like, I mean, again, unless I'm doing it for a video or like there's a new feature, I just, or something, but yeah, I could see that if you were, how that would be one, not very fun to try to find, I'm coming around on this side, to try to find anything. And also that that would make it even slower um, or more unresponsive, so.
This build is bananas. Wait, zombie hedgehog, you can just change it on the fly? <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. All right, so. Yeah, this belt is nuts. <laughs> this belt is super long. It makes sense um, since it's got enough slack or enough length to be used on the, the plus version of the under five. Okay, all right, let's tuck this dude in. And then, probably tension, and then I would say I'm likely gonna call it after that. I'm getting hungry, and when I get hungry, I do even sillier things. <laughs> I also get grumpy, and I don't wanna get grumpy. I've been having a good time. Uh, the search feature on Curie is awesome. I don't have to remember where the things are. I have to remember their name. Uh, you mean searching when you go to the show setting visibility or just searching in the accordion? I've never used, if there is a search function in the accordion on the right, I've never used it. I always scroll. Um, in all fairness, SuperSizer also has search, but ultimately, yeah, it's up to user preference. Finding settings doesn't cure the pain. And if you change an odd setting for a part, forget about it. Set setting, finding what you change can be impossible. Uh, this is more of a legacy account at this point. Oh, man. All right, well... You always be zombie hedgehog to me, man. <laughs> okay. So we are going to loosen this guy up. I don't know how loose I need to make it to slide the belt under. That seems like it's probably enough. Nope, maybe not. Yes. Okay, now my concern is, is the belt from the other side? There you go. Okay. Oh man, we lost, we lost quite a bit of belt on that side. Shit. Okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do is quite literally just check all the bearings um, and see that things are routed properly. Like in the bearings. That looks okay. That looks okay. That looks good. That looks good. Everything seems okay on this side. That's fine. That's fine. Check the other side. That also seems good. You look good. You look good. Everything looks, everyone's happy. Cool. Tension is definitely much less on the one I just did. I know we're not tensioning right now, but like I kind of want them to be at a similar starting point. Hey, what's up? Do it. <laughs> you're either you're either uh, man, you're either late to this stream or early to next week's, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Okay. Okay, I know we're not really tensioning right now, but they're at least like feeling close-ish. So I'm gonna at least I'm gonna start it with that if we're 
just use the towers to fix that. I know, it's just me. I like to have things at least at a sort of similar starting point. They feel roughly, no, they're not the same. That's okay. Okay, so. Is there anything special I need to do other than cutting, cutting off this and then using the towers along with the, um, I got these guys, uh, Scott, Scott gave me the links too, um, which I'm assuming go around this part possibly. You're saying, nope, there's nothing else special I gotta do. Just cut it and tension it. Okay, cool. All right, let's do it. Let's do the thing. <clears throat> we'll cut you roughly the same length for now. I'll leave it like that until uh, next week when we actually install the front, the hot end mount and all that stuff. Okay, now we're gonna use these little tensioners. <clears throat> Let's turn it like this, do a little more sideways. Uh, I also goofed, this needs to be match the geometry of that. There we go. <laughs> oh my God, dude. If that's, uh, let's see. Uh, are you de-racking the gantry? Uh, well, I don't know if you saw earlier, but the gantry should be racked based off of the way we set it up earlier. So no. Maybe I am screwing it up. Yeah, definitely time. That's <laughs> definitely a food call. Okay, so I think a lot of the reason why that's closer is because the tension's off. All right, anyways, let's start tens let's let's tension these a little bit and see what happens. Yeah, definitely uh definitely near food o'clock. When I came out, Aaron asked if I'd be done by four. It's almost four twenty. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> you know what? Another thing I'm wondering is there is definitely a gap between these two. Um, is it because I don't have them? Okay, I'm gonna tension this then I'm gonna um, Slide it to because that's loose. That's because the front tension tower is pulled more to the front. Yeah, so it still works, but needs to be modified. Yeah, I think we're.
Looks like the tool should butt up to the front extrusion instead of the tower. Huh. What do you, so you, you actually use an app, um, Dutch to, to measure the sound? I usually measure to the front pin, the front of the pin at 150 millimeters. Do you tighten the belt? Looking at... No, nope. too thoroughly. Okay, so that does butt up against it now. God, I did it wrong again. Yeah, I use Spectroid um, just to see how equal they are. Gotcha. That's yeah, weird. This one still seems further. Well, yeah, it's because of the block. It's definitely because the blocks aren't at the same. So that doesn't mean anything about the actual distance because it's going from the block, which blocks aren't the same. So those wouldn't match up. Yeah, the, it's um, the gantry is how it's supposed to be. Yeah, the tools need modification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because going to the back, um, although I guess it's the tool head that's hitting. But yeah, that's definitely what it is. It's just that the blocks are different. I can see the gap. There's a substantial difference in gap from the straight. But because of the way we set it up initially with the tool that made sure it was, it was um, parallel to this, it should be fine. Yeah, the blocks, uh, the blocks are the tensioners. So tightening this pulls the entire tower backwards. So I think it's fine for now. Um, I might look into it a little bit more and chat with you, uh, Dutch, or just in in uh, Discord over the next week to see a little bit more about how you're doing it. I also might reset the tension actually on it just so that way I can get the blocks to be roughly the exact same starting point versus off. It's gonna. It's, it might bug me a little bit. I wonder if the real, no, the reels, the reels seem like they're roughly the same. I thought I had checked on that. So just don't stress the tension letters. You likely won't uh, both touch at the same time. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, the cool is good for when you start to turn, uh, turn the belt into my machine frequencies to give you an approximate belt length to tune against. Got you. Okay. I guess it just, it's, um, it's awesome that that's a thing. Uh, it's just more more of a science than I'm used to. Um, pretty much every, there's only one build I've ever done where I was measuring it um, to a frequency, which was the Kevin AKA Sam Z belted mod as part of it. He has you downloaded an app and that's how you set it. But for like all the Vorons and really everything else, it's just been based off feel. So I guess that's, um, it's which has worked quite well. Although there's obviously a lot more room for like deviation if you're going just based on oh that feels right versus the actual sound that it's making so but yeah i think we're gonna call it here um this is an interesting stream I, I mean all things considered i think it went well um i wasn't i didn't know i was going to be soldering although it was just two little pins and it no big deal um the 35 the m3 by 35 has definitely added a bit of time to our our um thing but i'm glad that it seems like they worked out and again the the bolt sticking out the back on the bottom you won't even see and the bolts on top maybe i file the end hair but it's not going to be a big deal because it's completely hidden as well so i think that next week we will install the we'll finish up the um finish up the tool head we'll do the hot end the extruder the wiring to the stock board hopefully flashing clipper and, and I would love to lay down a 20 millimeter cube next week. I don't know if we will. I, I, I thought we were going to have the entire, I thought we were going to be like beyond this in just one stream. I, I completely un underestimated that nothing ever goes perfectly smooth and that it, it's, it's, 
you can't just race through a build like that. Uh, so, so you passed, passed the encrypt. Yeah, exactly. Uh, fuel can work just fine, but none if you intend to do unicorn speeds. Yeah, that's that's fair. I, I do want to I do want to push this uh, because of some of the things I've seen. Not regularly. Like I don't think every print I want to go super saiyan speeds, but I, I want to see what it can do. So I might I might check. Um, if Dutch, if you got a little more info as far as what you're measuring off of, I would definitely be interested in, in hearing that. Um, and I might just do that off offline then. So, but yeah, I will schedule next week's stream, same place, same time. And uh, I think that's all I got. Thank you everybody for all your help and uh, laughter. <laughs> and congratulations, John, and support. Um, Scott, thank you again for your awesome generous donation i really appreciate it and uh, again we'll be we've, we've been getting a bunch of baby stuff in all the time but we we have so much more baby stuff and uh thank you all the new members and again everyone just for hanging out i appreciate it all and we will pick up uh pick up where we left off next week if i don't see you before if i don't see you before because you're busy next week traveling or doing family stuff and i hope you have a wonderful christmas everybody or holiday whatever you celebrate and we will uh we'll see you soon so on that note I'll talk to you all later. Enjoy your dinners or whatever. Everyone talked about foods earlier and I'm starving, so I'm gonna go eat.